afternoon, brothers and sisters, and welcome. Welcome to the House of Jacob Bible Study class. My name is Brother Allen, and I'll be a reader for today. Teaching today's lesson is our pastor, Brother Daniel. The title of today's lesson is Circumcision of the Flesh and Heart. We ask that you turn off any noise-making devices at this time, and we turn you over to our pastor, Brother Daniel. First of all, I want to thank the choir for two excellent selections, you all. And then I want to welcome everybody, everybody that's here. Welcome to you, everybody that's joining us by our live stream, by our conference call. Welcome to them as well. Say to them, it's good to have you fellowshipping with us, as always. Amen. So now again, uh, I'm going to give you a tight little lesson, Brother Allen just gave it to you, but it's circumcision of the flesh and of the heart. Circumcision of the flesh, that means cutting away of the foreskin of uh, the male organ. Circumcision of the heart, that means put away wickedness. That's what that means. Now, all males going to have to be circumcised. I'm going to tell you that right now, whether it's Israel or whether it's Gentiles, you're going to have to be circumcised. You know, I know there's a couple of scriptures uh, that kind of got a little gray around it about circumcising the Gentiles. But people have taken that scripture and used it for everybody. But we're going to read that. We're going to read some other things in the, uh, in, uh, in, in the scriptures as well about circumcision that maybe has a little gray around it. But we're going to clear all of that up. We're going to show you what it was talking about. But now this circumcision of the flesh, all males have to get it, but circumcision of the heart, everybody's going to have to get it, whether you male, female, Jew, Gentile, does not matter. Everybody's going to have to get the circumcision of the heart, and we're going to show you all of that in this lesson. But we're going to first start out by showing you when circumcision was instituted and who instituted it and... Uh, and and, uh, and 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 when it was instituted. Let's go to uh, Genesis chapter uh, chapter 17, and we'll begin reading at verse one. Genesis 17. We're gonna pick it up at verse one, cause we gonna deal with this circumcision thing from the New Testament as well. But first, we gonna deal with it when it was first instituted, and we are gonna make it clear uh, who instituted uh, this circumcision. And, uh, and, 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 and who he said should be circumcised. Let's start reading at Genesis chapter uh, 17 and begin reading at verse 1, 17 and 1. Go ahead and read, brother. And when, Abr and when Abram was 90 years old and nine, uh -huh. the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. Now, first he was called Abram, then, and now the Lord is going to change his name to Abraham because he's going to become a father of many nations. But now he said to Abram, walk before me uh, and be thou perfect. I am the almighty God. Go ahead, continue to read. And I will make my covenant uh -huh. between me and thee and will multiply thee exceedingly. Now, the Lord is saying to Abraham, I'm going to make a covenant, Abraham, between me and you. And then I am going to multiply thee exceedingly because the Lord is getting ready to tell Abraham he's going to make him a father of many nations. Go ahead. Continue reading, brother. And Abram fell on his face, uh -huh. and God talked with him, saying, As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee, uh -huh. and thou shalt be a father of many nations. Now you say, Abraham, you're going to be a father of many nations. So therefore the Lord is going to change his name from Abram to Abraham because Abraham means a father of many. And this had to do with a spiritual, this had a spiritual side as well as a natural side. And we're going to get to that as we get into this lesson. Go ahead, continue reading, bro. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, uh -huh. but thy name shall be Abraham. Go ahead. For a father of many nations have I made thee. Uh -huh. And I will make thee exceeding fruitful, and I will make nations of thee and kings shall come out of thee. Go ahead. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee mm -hmm. and thy seed after thee in their generations for an everlasting covenant. Now he said, I'm going to establish my covenant, Abraham, with me and, and you 
and, and thy seed after thee in their generation. He said, even for an everlasting covenant. Go ahead, continue to read. To be a God unto thee, uh -huh. and to thy seed after thee. He said, to be a God unto you, uh, Abraham, and to your seed after you. We're going to find out who Abraham's seed is. I mean, I understand about Israel being Abraham's seed, and in part, this covenant had to do with a promise that God made to Abraham and his seed after him regarding the land of Canaan, but it went far beyond that. Because we're going to find out about Abraham's natural seed, and then we're going to find out about Abraham's spiritual seed as well. Okay, go ahead. Continue reading, brother. And I will give unto thee uh -huh. and to thy seed after thee go ahead. the land wherein thou art a stranger, uh -huh. all the land of Canaan, for an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. Now, he said, now, 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 now this part of the promise uh, that he's making to Abraham and his seed after him had to do with the... Uh, nation of Israel, you know, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and then the nation of Israel about the land of Canaan. But as I said earlier, it goes beyond that. Now, uh, continue reading. Go ahead and read, brother. And God said unto Abraham. Uh, and who said unto Abraham? God. And God said unto Abraham. Moses didn't say unto Abraham. God said unto Abraham. So I'm going to show you who made this covenant uh, uh, with uh, Abraham and with his seed after him. And I'm going to show you what the Lord said this covenant consists of. Go ahead, continue to read. Thou shalt keep my covenant, uh -huh. therefore, thou and thy seed after thee in their generation. Go ahead and read. This is my covenant which ye shall keep between me and you and thy seed after thee. Uh -huh. Every man child among you shall be circumcised. Now he said, uh, Abraham, to you and your seed after you, every man child among you shall be circumcised. And we're going to find out this had to do with natural born Israelites, but it also had to do with the strangers as well. Every man child of the Lord says here. Go ahead, read some more. And ye shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin, uh -huh. and it shall be a token of the covenant betwixt me and you. So now he said you shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin, and it shall be a token of the covenant between me and thee. In other words, a sign of this covenant was the circumcising of the flesh. And we're going to see this had to do with every male, everyone that would become a part of the household of Abraham, everyone that would become a part of this covenant. And if you're going to get salvation, you're going to have to become a part of this covenant. Don't let anybody ever tell you anything different. Go ahead, continue reading, brother. And he that is eight days old uh -huh. shall be circumcised among you. Now, who is making this covenant with Abraham? God is making this covenant, isn't it? Long before that was Moses. You know, because they want to make, uh, you know, um, uh, Moses be the one to institute the covenant. No, it was the Lord that instituted this covenant. And he did it with Abraham and with his seed after him. He said, in their generations, even for an everlasting covenant. He said, every male child... Uh, when he is eight days old, must be circumcised. He said, well, uh, you know, I ain't been circumcised, and I'm far past eight days old. Guess what? Abraham got circumcised when he was 99. You 99 yet? <laughs> so now, you know, whenever it was that you understood that you had to get this circumcision, then that's when you had to get this circumcision. But the Lord, but it was supposed to have been when a, when a child was eight days old that he would be circumcised. But go ahead, continue reading. Every man child uh -huh. in your generations, he that is born in the house uh -huh. are brought with money. Now he say every man child in their generation, he that is uh, uh, born in the house and he that is bought with money. Go ahead, continue read. Of any stranger which is not of thy seed. Wait a minute, now he done brought in everybody here, hadn't he? Yes, sir. He said of any stranger that is not as he, first he said Abraham and your seed after him. Now he says of any stranger, Abraham, that is not of thy seed. He, too, must be circumcised. He, if he's going to become a part of the covenant, if he's going to become a part of the household of Abraham, then he had to be circumcised. And you need to become a part of the covenant and a part of the household of Abraham. Go ahead. Read some more, bro. He that is born in thy house, uh -huh. and he that he is bought with thy money, mm -hmm. must needs be circumcised, and my covenant shall be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant. Okay, go ahead. Well, what, what verse up? Starting 14. Go ahead and read it. And the uncircumcised man-child, whose flesh of his foreskin is not circumcised. Now, he said the uncircumcised man-child, whose flesh of his foreskin is not circumcised. Look at what the Lord says here. Go ahead, continue reading. That soul shall be cut off from his people. He hath broken my covenant. He said that soul will be cut off from God's people. He has broken my covenant. Every man child, whether it be 
of Abraham natural seed or whether it be of the stranger. He said, everyone must be circumcised. And the one that do not be circumcised, that soul shall be cut off from his people. He has broken the covenant. And this is the covenant that will get you salvation. We're going to find that out a little bit later. So now everybody had to be circumcised. And who instituted this circumcision? Every male had to be circumcised. And who instituted this circumcision? God instituted this circumcision before there even was an Israelite, because there was no Israelite at this time, people. Israel didn't come into the picture until uh, 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 Jacob was born, and God changed his name from Jacob unto Israel. That's when you had your first Israelite. Mm -hmm. But now, long before you got to that, the Lord said, every male must be circumcised. Whether it be Abraham's natural seed or whether it be the stranger, he must be circumcised. And if he's not circumcised, then he has broken the covenant, and he will be cut off from God's people. That's not good, people. Let's go now to uh, let's go now to uh, 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 Leviticus chapter 23, and we're gonna pick it up at uh, verse one. Leviticus 23, and we're gonna begin read at verse one. Cause we're gonna make this thing very clear to you today, people, that every male must be circumcised, and that every person peer in the in the flesh, and every person period must be circumcised in the heart. We're going to make that very clear to you because I know that people are taught, it is commonly taught that if you are a Gentile, then you don't have to be circumcised. But we're going to find out that is not the case because where they get that from is Acts chapter 15, and we're going to read that a little bit later. But they have taken that not to be just the Gentiles. They've taken that to be everybody because everybody's always looking for a way to get around the Word of God. But we're going to read that, and we're going to see what it's saying to us. But now let's go to uh, Exodus chapter um, uh, Exodus chapter twelve, uh, and uh, I'm sorry, not Exodus, but Leviticus chapter twenty-three, rather, and we'll pick it up at verse y, uh, verse five. Go ahead and read, bro. In the fourteenth day of the first month at even. Now, now pick it back up, to verse one, verse one, Leviticus twenty-three and one. Go ahead and read. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying... Now, again, who are we dealing with here? We are dealing with the Lord, and the Lord is telling Moses what to say to the people. Let's be very clear about that. This, but this is not what Moses is saying to the people. This is what God is telling Moses to say to the people, and Moses is only uh, following instructions. Go ahead, continue reading. Speak unto the children of Israel, uh -huh. and say unto them, concerning the feast of the Lord, Go ahead. which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations, uh -huh. even these are my feasts. Now he says, speak unto the people and say unto them, concerning the feast of the Lord, even these are my feasts, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations in their seasons. Go ahead, continue to read. Six days shall work be done, uh -huh. but the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest. Go ahead. And holy convocation, you should do no work therein, it is uh, the Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwelling. And that did not change people even to this very day. It still applies. God, God uh, gave it way back here, and but it still applies even to this day. It's still the seventh day. It's not the first day, as some may say. It is the seventh day. God gave man the seventh day as a Sabbath day. Moses didn't give man the seventh day as a Sabbath day, and you cannot read anywhere in your Bible where it was ever changed. You cannot read that. I know people say it, and I know where that change came from, where they, where they attempted to change, I should say, because they didn't change it. Mm -hmm. he, they may tell you it's been changed, but if God didn't change it, then it ain't been changed. No, sir. How, 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 how any, any man going to circumvent the commandment of God? How you going to do that? If God didn't change, it still applies, people. So now... He said, the seventh day is the Sabbath day of the Lord. It said, not the Sabbath day of the Jews, but it is the Sabbath day of the Lord. That's who Sabbath day is, as well as these other high days that he's going to mention here, but we're only going to deal with one other one. Go ahead, continue reading. Verse 4. Uh-huh. These are the feasts of the Lord. Go ahead. Even holy convocations, which he shall proclaim in their seasons. Now, the Lord even says it again. These are the feasts of the Lord, holy convocations, which he shall proclaim in their seasons. Go ahead and read. In the fourteenth day of the first month at even is the Lord's Passover. Now, we got that coming up in a few weeks, a uh, couple of weeks or so, but we're not dealing with that uh, today. But I just want to read that just to show you it is the Lord's Passover. And I know he says, say unto Israel, but whatever he said unto Israel, it applies to everybody else as well. 
Because whatever Israel have to do to get salvation, everybody else have to do the same identical thing. The Lord does not have two agendas. He don't have one for the Gentiles and another for Israel. He has one agenda for everybody. And we're going to see that as we get farther into this lesson as well. Now let's go over to uh, Exodus chapter 12. And we're going to pick it up at verse 43, Exodus 12. And we'll begin reading at verse 43, Exodus 12 and 43. Because I'm going to show you when the Lord instituted this Passover and what he said for those that would keep the Passover. Because if you're going to be a servant of God, you have to keep these high days, people. I don't care who you are. You have to keep the high days if you are going to be a servant of God. I know people try to get around them, try to say Jesus nailed them to the cross. No, he did not. Jesus nailed the animal sacrifice law to the cross, and that is the only law that he nailed to the cross. He didn't nail any other law to the cross. He didn't nail the Ten Commandments or the high days or the dietary law or any of that stuff to the cross. It was the animal sacrifice law that he nailed to the cross. Now, I'm going to show you here uh, what he said for those uh, uh, that would keep the Lord's pass. So we want to pick it up at Exodus 12 and began reading at verse 43, 12 and 43. Okay, go ahead and read, brother. And the Lord said unto Moses and Aaron, uh -huh. this is the ordinance of the Passover. There shall no stranger eat thereof. Now, the Lord said unto Moses and to Aaron, this is the ordinance of the Passover. And then he says here, there shall no stranger eat thereof. But he going let him finish before you jump to any conclusions here, okay? Yes. Go ahead and read. But every man's servant uh -huh. that is bought for money, Go ahead. when thou hast circumcised him, uh -huh. then shall he eat thereof. Now he said, after he had been circumcised, then shall he eat thereof. Go ahead, continue to read. A foreigner uh -huh. and a hired servant shall not eat thereof. Go ahead and read. In one house shall it be eaten. Uh -huh. Thou shalt not carry forth aught of the flesh abroad out of the house. Uh -huh. Neither shall ye break a bone thereof. Go ahead and read. All the congregation of Israel shall keep it. Now he said all the congregation of Israel, they shall keep this Passover. But he's going to tell you as well, a stranger too that was sojourned among them. They must keep it as well. You know, the Lord made the covenant with Abraham. He said, Abraham, your seed, meaning his natural seed and the stranger that was sojourned among you, they too must be circumcised. And if they don't be circumcised, then they have broken this covenant and they shall be cut off from God's people. You don't want to be cut off from God's people. No, you understand what I'm telling you? The, to be a part of God's people, that gives you access to eternal life. But if you wind up being cut off from God's people, then you have no access any longer to eternal life. Go ahead, continue reading, brother. Verse 48. Read it. And when a stranger shall sojourn with thee, uh -huh. and will keep the Passover of the Lord. Now he said, when a stranger that will sojourn with you, and that will keep the Passover of the Lord. And the, notice what it said, Passover of the Lord. And, and the Lord gave this commandment. And then the servants of God, they must be obedient to these commandments that the Lord gave. Now, he's saying for the stranger that was sojourned among you, if he would keep the Passover, then this is what he must do. Go ahead, continue to read. Let all his males be circumcised. He said, let all of his males be circumcised. All of the males be circumcised. If he will keep the Passover of the Lord. In other words, if he will be obedient unto the commandment of the Lord, then let all of his males be circumcised. Go ahead, continue to read, brother. And then let him come near and keep it. Uh -huh. And he shall be as one that is born in the land. See what it's saying? Then he shall be as one born in the land. He shall be as Israel. This is how he get grafted in and become a part of the people of God. If he does the things that God said for Israel to do. Then he's just like an Israelite. He's Israel in the spirit. He's still whatever he is in the flesh, but now he's become Israel in the spirit. Go ahead, continue to read. For no uncircumcised person shall eat thereof. Wait a minute. So if you're uncircumcised, you can't eat, whether you Israel or whether you the stranger. You cannot be obedient unto the Lord's commandment. God got a commandment, and he said, let them keep the Passover. But then he turns around, and he said, you know, whether they be Israel or whether they be stranger, they must be circumcised in order to keep the Passover. Now, you do whatever. And who is telling you this? God is telling you this. This ain't Moses telling you this. This is God telling you this. My Moses, you go speak unto the people, and you tell them this. So now, if you're going to be obedient unto the commandment, then you must be circumcised. Go ahead, continue to read. 
One law shall be to him that is homeborn huh. and unto the stranger that sojourneth among you. See what it said there should be one law. God, I said it earlier. Lord has one agenda for everybody. You know, whether you Israel or whether you the stranger, does not matter. Whatever God says for Israel to do, everybody else must do it as well. And this circumcision thing, you cannot keep it. God said it, you cannot keep it unless you have been circumcised whether you Israel or whether you are a stranger, it does not matter. Let's go now to uh, uh, let's go now to uh, Leviticus chapter twelve, and we'll pick it up at verse one. Leviticus chapter twelve, and we'll begin reading at verse one. Twelve and one. Twelve and one. You gonna let people tell you uh, that you don't have to keep the Passover? Well, when Passover night uh, uh, roll around, you are gonna find out really what Passover is all about. But I'm gonna just quote this one scripture here. And that's 1 Corinthians chapter 5. Even Christ, our Passover, was sacrificed for us. So now you think about that. And you're going to get the whole story on the Passover night. But now, let's uh, 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 pick it up at Leviticus chapter 12. And we'll begin reading at uh, verse 1. Leviticus 12, and we'll pick it up at verse 1. Okay, go ahead and read, brother. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, uh -huh. Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If a woman have conceived seed, uh -huh. and born a man-child, then she shall be unclean seven days, according to the days of the separation for her infirmity, so she be unclean. Now, again, it is the Lord that's speaking unto Moses. He is telling Moses what to say unto the people. Don't ever forget that. Next time somebody want to tell you about some law of Moses, you tell them, it was the Lord's law that he gave to Moses and told Moses to give to the people. So if you got a problem with the, with the law, your problem with God. That's who it's with. It's not with Moses, not with the house of Jacob. It's with God. That's who it's with. Go ahead. Continue reading. And in the eighth day, uh -huh. the flesh of his foreskin shall be circumcised. So, well, that's the covenant that he made with uh, Abraham, isn't it? Mm -hmm. He says, so now, on the eighth day, his, uh, his foreskin shall be circumcised. Well, I'm, pa I'm far past eight days, so... I'm exempt. No, you're not. If you're going to get in the kingdom, you're not exempt. You're going to get circumcised because the Lord said you have broken the covenant and you will be cut off from God's people. That's what God said. Go ahead. Continue reading, brother. And she shall then continue in now, the blood of her purifying three and thirty days. Go ahead and read. She shall touch no hallowed thing, nor come into the sanctuary until the days of her purifying be fulfilled. Go ahead. But if she bear a maid child, then she shall be unclean two weeks, uh -huh. as in her separation, and she shall continue in the blood of her purifying three score and six days. Go ahead. And when the days of her purifying are fulfilled, for a son or for a daughter, she shall bring a lamb of the first year for a burnt offering, and a young pigeon or a turtle dove for a sin offering unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation unto the priest. Now, all this about the uh, young pigeon and the dove and the turtle dove and the lamb and all of that, that's what Jesus nailed to the cross. He did not nail any other law to the cross. That is the stuff that he nailed to the cross. The Bible is very clear about that. Whether you believe in the Old Testament or whether you believe in the New Testament, the Bible is very clear that is the law that Jesus nailed to the cross. The angel told Daniel when the Messiah would be cut off, he would call sacrifice and oblation to cease. And then Paul in uh, Hebrews chapter 10 made a clear, wherefore when he cometh, he says sacrifice and an offering thou would if yes, not. Sir. Not the Ten Commandments thou would if not. Not the high days thou would if not. But sacrifice and an offering thou would if not. That is the law. Uh, that he nailed to the cross. So you ain't got to worry about finding, you know, turtle dove, no lamb, and all of that stuff, because all of that ended when Jesus died. But the high days did not end when the Lord died, because long after Jesus died on the cross, they were still doing the high days. Mm -hmm. You know, Paul told you all the way over in the 20th chapter of uh, Acts, he said, I must by all... I must by all means get back up to Jerusalem to keep Pentecost. And that was right after he had kept the days of unleavened bread, meaning the Passover and the seven days of unleavened bread. So it was still good. Jesus didn't nail to the cross. You understand? Otherwise, they would not have been still keeping those days. So now the thing that he nailed to the cross uh, uh, was the animal sacrifice law. But go ahead, read some more. Verse 7. Read it. 
who shall offer it before the Lord and make an atonement for Go ahead. And she shall be cleansed from the issue of her blood. Uh. This is the law Go for ahead. her that hath born a male or a female. Go ahead, read. And if she be not able to bring a lamb, uh -huh. then she shall bring two turtles or two young pigeons, for uh, two young pigeons, the one for the burnt offering and the other for a sin offering. And the priest shall make an atonement for her, and she shall be clean. Now, let's go over, and I'm going to show you when Jesus came, uh, that uh, it, the, the, the animal sacrifice law didn't end until Jesus died. And I'm going to show you when he came, when he was born, I'm going to show you what was done. Let's go over to uh, uh, Luke chapter 2, and we'll pick it up at verse 21, Luke 2. And we began reading at verse 21, because the animal sacrifice law was still good, people, up until Jesus came and died. It was still good. And once he died, that ended, because it ushered out the old covenant and it brought in the new covenant. Let's go to, uh, let's go to uh, Luke chapter 2. And we want to begin reading at verse 21, Luke 2, and pick it up at verse 21. Okay, go ahead and read, brother. And when eight days were accomplished for Now, the we're dealing with the birth of Jesus here. When eight days was accomplished, look at what they did. Go ahead and read, bro. For the circumcising of the child. For the circumcising of the child. Go ahead and read. His name was called Jesus, uh -huh. which was so named of the angel before he was conceived in the womb. Yeah, you can go back to Luke chapter 1, and it tells you all of that. Go ahead, continue to read. And when the days of her purification, according to the law of Moses, were accomplished. Well, whose law was it? God's law, wasn't it? Yeah. But you, cause people, they, they, oh, they jump on this. Okay. Cause, see, that was the law of Moses. No, it was not. That's why, I, that's why I emphasize that it was the law of the Lord. God said to Moses, you go and tell the people this, Moses. Moses became known as a lawgiver because he was the one that, for the most part, delivered it unto the people. But it was not Moses' law. It was the Lord's law that he gave unto Moses and told Moses to give unto the people. So they looked at Moses as being the lawgiver. But we clearly read that it was the Lord that told Moses, say unto the people, this is what must be done. Eight days he must be circumcised. And then if it's a man child had to sacrifice certain things, if it was a female had to sacrifice certain things. Mm -hmm. But now they call it here the law of Moses. Go ahead, continue to read. They brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. Go ahead. As it is written of the law of the Lord. Every male that openeth the womb shall be called holy to the Lord. Go ahead and read. And to offer a sacrifice according to that which is said in the law uh -huh. of the Lord. A pair well, of they said it right that time. That which is said in the law of the Lord. Because that's whose law it was. It was the law of the Lord. Go ahead, continue to read. A pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. So now you know you got Jesus. When he came in the flesh, when he was born... Of Mary. What did they do with him? They circumcised him on the eighth day, even as the Lord said that it should be done. Let's go now. Uh, 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 let's go back to uh, 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 Joshua. And we'll pick it up at uh, Joshua chapter 5. And we'll begin reading at uh, verse 2. Joshua chapter 5. And we'll begin reading at verse 2. We're going to hit on some things here about this circumcision thing. And then we're going to get over into the New Testament where they done took a few scriptures and ran with them and messed them up. But we're going to clear it all up today, people. Joshua chapter 5. And I want you to begin reading at uh, verse 2. Joshua 5. And we'll pick it up at verse 2. Now, when Israel came out of Egypt, uh, while they were in Egypt, they were still circumcising as they should have you know, even though they were in bondage, some things they didn't lose, some things they still understood that they were supposed to have done. Because, you know, uh, 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 Joseph went down into Egypt. Then the rest of his family followed him down there because there was a famine in the land, and Joseph had risen up to become the second ruler in Egypt. When there was a famine in the land, there was only food in Egypt. So Israel had to go uh, down into Egypt to look for food. And later on, there rose up a pharaoh that didn't know Joseph, and he started to afflict them and put them in bondage. But even some things they never lost. They still understood while they were there in bondage about the, circumcis uh, 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 the circumcising of the uh, children. Joshua chapter uh, 5, and began reading at verse 2, Joshua 5, 
and pick it up at verse 2. Go ahead and read, brother. At that time, the Lord said unto Joshua, uh -huh. Make these sharp knives and circumcise again the children of Israel the second time. Now he said to Joshua, Make you uh, sharp knives and, and circumcise uh, the children of Israel again the second time. And the ones that he's talking about uh, being circumcised, as we are about to read here, was those that was born there in the wilderness that hadn't gotten circumcised. All of them that came out of Egypt had been circumcised. But the Lord had killed every one of them so much for circumcising in itself, saving you. It is a part of what you must do, but in itself it cannot save you. Because you got some Israel, even back then in the New Testament, they were always boasting, well, you know, I'm circumcised in the flesh, I'm an Israelite, I'm, you know. And you Gentile, you uncircumcised, and you a Gentile, and you unclean, and all of that stuff. It, it's still going on to this very generation. It was going on all the way back in the New Testament. But this one thing is very clear here. You know, uh, all, all the Israel that came out of Egypt was circumcised. Yet God killed every one of them right there in the wilderness except two. You know why he killed them all except two? Because they didn't obey the law. They were circumcised, but they didn't obey the law. Yes, to get circumcised, and we're going to find out later, even in the New Testament, to get circumcised without being obedient unto the law means absolutely nothing. You go on in the fire with uh, circumcised. You don't obey that law and find out what's going to happen to you. Don't let nobody tell you. Don't let nobody tell you if you're a male. I don't care if you're Israel, if you're a Gentile. Don't let nobody tell you you ain't got to get circumcised. And don't let nobody tell you you ain't got to keep no law. So now, he said, uh, 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 at that time, the Lord said unto Joshua, it's always the Lord that's doing the saying. It ain't Moses that's doing the sand. Moses done passed on now, and it's not Joshua that's doing the sand. It is the Lord that's doing the sand, and just as he told Moses what to say to the people, now he's telling Joshua what to do. Go ahead, continue to read, brother. And Joshua made him sharp knives uh -huh. and circumcised the children of Israel at the heel of the foreskin. Go ahead, me. And this is the cause why Joshua did circumcise. Now, this is the cause why Joshua did circumcise. Go ahead, continue to read. All the people that came out of Egypt that were males, even all the men of war, died in the wilderness by the way after they came out of Egypt. See, that's, that's what I was saying earlier. The Lord killed every one of them. The only two he left alive uh, was Joshua and Caleb. He killed all the rest of the old heads right there in the wilderness, even though when they came out, they knew they was Israel and they had been circumcised. But they didn't obey the law because soon as they got out, uh, so, sooner they came out, they started rebelling right away. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. First thing they did, jumped up and forced Aaron to make them a, make them a, 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 a calf and said, these be the gods that brought you out of Egypt. So they started rebellion right away. They started to get away from God's commandments right away. Go ahead. What verse are we? Starting five. Read it. Now all the people that came out, of, out were circumcised. See what I'm saying? Every Israelite that came out of Egypt, they had been circumcised. But all those that had been born in the wilderness, they had not been circumcised. And those were the ones that God is telling Joshua that he now must circumcise. Because the circumcision was still good. Israel understood it when they were down in Egypt. They understood that, and they did the circumcise. Because I just told you, all those that came out had been circumcised. And the one that Joshua had to circumcise was those that had been born in the wilderness. Go ahead, continue to read. But all the people that were born in the wilderness, by the way, as they came forth out of Egypt, uh -huh. them they had not circumcised. Go ahead, read. For the children of Israel walked 40 years in the wilderness, till all the people that were men of war, which came out of Egypt, were consumed, mm -hmm. because they obeyed not the voice of the Lord. See what I said? They got consumed because they did not obey the voice of the Lord. You know what I'm saying? What I'm saying? You got to have, you may as well understand it, you got to have the law with the circumcision. And that is what them Israelites was always following Paul around, kicking about. Well, you know, trying to tell the people they got to be circumcised, they got to be circumcised, got to be circumcised. And yes, they do need to be circumcised, but Paul warned them about them Israelites that followed him around, telling the people that they got to be circumcised. Paul said, yeah, but uh, they... They, they're always boasting, but they don't keep no law. Okay. 
What's good? You get them today. I run into some of them, what I call old school Israel. I get them today. They always boasting they Israel. They always boasting about they circumcised, but they ain't keeping no law. So what good is it? No. Might as well not even be circumcised. Go ahead, continue to read. Middle of six. Read it. Unto whom the Lord swear that he would not show them the land which the Lord swear unto their fathers. See what the Lord says, that the Lord swear, you ain't getting into the land. You know, you're circumcised, but you ain't getting into the land of your father, the land that I made the promise to Abraham of. You ain't getting in there. Go ahead, continue to read. That he would give us uh -huh. a, a land that floweth with milk and honey. Go ahead and read. And their children whom he raised up they, uh, in their stead, them Joshua circumcised. Uh -huh. For they were uncircumcised because they had not circumcised them by the way. Go ahead and read. And it came to pass when they had done circumcising all the people that they abode in their places in the camp till they were whole. Now, uh, in other words, until they had healed. So now, you know, so now they, you know, the circumcision is still good. You know, Israel, uh, they, they out of bondage, they out of Egypt now, and they there in the wilderness, and the Lord is saying to Joshua, you go and circumcise all those ones that had not gotten uh, circumcised. Let's go over to Exodus chapter 4, and we'll pick it up at verse 24, Exodus 4, and we're going to pick it up at uh, verse 24, 4 and 24, and I'm going to show you a thing that the Lord was about to do to Moses uh, because Moses had not circumcised his sons. Uh, 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 Exodus, uh, Exodus chapter 4. And I want you to begin reading at uh, verse 24. Now, that's the thing that the Lord, uh, see, let, just let you know the Lord says about this circumcising thing. This is the thing he was going to do to Moses now. And, and I know I don't rank nowhere uh, near Moses. And I would imagine you don't either. I, I, yes, you know, I, I would imagine. Yes, sir. I, I, I ain't going to say you don't, but I, I, I just would imagine that anyway. Absolutely, brother. So I'm going to show you uh, 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 what uh, uh, the Lord was going to do with Moses here because Moses had not circumcised his son. Start reading at verse 24, 4 and 24. Go ahead and read, brother. And it came to pass by the way in the end uh -huh. that the Lord met him and sought to kill him. Now, this is Moses that the Lord had met and that he didn't sought to kill him. And he's going to let you know why he sought to kill him. Go ahead, continue to read. Then Zipporah took a sharp stone. Now, this is Moses' wife. Then she took a sharp so a stone. This is what she did. Go ahead and read on. And cut off the foreskin of her son uh -huh. and cast it at his feet uh -huh. and said, Surely a bloody husband art thou to me. Now, he said, Surely... Thou uh, art bloody husband unto me, cause, uh, 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 cause you, you did not circumcise my children here. You know, it was her boys, it was Moses' sons as well, and the Lord sought to kill him, and, and Zipporah took a sharp stone, and she circumcised and said unto Moses, you a bloody husband art thou to me. Go ahead, continue to read. So he let him go. Uh -huh. Then she said, a bloody... And so the Lord let him go. You know, because his wife and grabbed them boys and a stone and circumcised them boys. So the Lord let him go. Go ahead, continue to read. Then she said, uh -huh. a bloody husband thou art because of the circumcision. He said, you're a bloody husband, Moses, because of the circumcision. But my point is, the Lord sought to kill Moses because Moses had not circumcised his child, his children right there. The Lord sought to kill him, people. You think the Lord ain't serious about this circumcision thing? Don't let nobody tell you nothing different. Now, uh, uh, let, we, uh, uh, let's go over to uh, 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 Isaiah chapter uh, 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 56. So now one thing is clear, and that is that it is a foregone conclusion that Israel must be circumcised. That is a foregone conclusion. The issue that came up was, whether or not the Gentiles needed to be circumcised. That was the issue that came up. It was never an issue as to whether Israel had to be circumcised. That was never an issue. The big argument came over whether or not the Gentiles needed to be circumcised. That was what the big argument was all about in Acts chapter 15. And we're going to get over there in just a little while and read it, but we're going to read a couple of other things before we get there. Let's go now to uh, Isaiah chapter uh, uh, 56, and we'll pick it up at uh, verse uh, verse 1, Isaiah 56, 
and began reading at verse 1, 56, and we'll pick it up at verse 1. Go ahead and read, bro. Thus saith the Lord, mm -hmm. keep ye judgment and do justice. Now, not thus said Isaiah, but thus said the Lord, keep ye judgment and do justice here. And he's going to tell us a little something about the stranger here as what he needs to do in order to be saved. Go ahead, continue read. For my salvation is near to come, uh -huh. and my righteousness to be revealed. Now he said, keep ye judgment to the stranger. He said, uh, he said, thus said the Lord, keep ye judgment and do justice. For my salvation is near to come, and my righteousness is to be revealed. Go ahead, continue read, bro. Blessed is the man that doeth this, uh -huh. and the son of man that layeth hold on it. Go ahead and read. That keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it, uh -huh. and keepeth his hand from doing any evil. Now he's saying to the man, he said, that doeth this, and the son of man that layeth hold on it, that will keep the Sabbath from polluting it, and keep his hand from doing any evil. Go ahead, continue read. Neither let the son of the stranger uh -huh. that hath joined himself to the Lord speak, saying. Now he said, do not let the son of the stranger that have joined himself to the Lord speak, saying. Don't let him say this. Because, you know, the Lord, for the most part, he had just dealt with Israel. You know, he had dealt with Israel to the point that Israel started to believe this was all about them. It didn't have nothing to do with nobody else. But it was always all about God's creation. Always. Lord had just set a protocol as to how he was going to deal with the rest of the creation. But it was always about the entire creation. God did not create man to put him in the fire. If he so, wound up in the fire, it's because he chose not to do the thing that God commanded that he should do. Absolutely, brother. Because you're going to say that, that the Gentile is going to automatically go to the fire just because he happened to be born a Gentile then you're saying God is an unjust judge. He done created a man, put life in him. But now he did all of that just to put him in the fire. I'm going to tell you a little something. Uh, uh, the Lord didn't even create Satan. What the Lord created was an archangel. But Satan turned wicked. Yes, sir. Then the Lord created the fire to put Satan and his angels in. Let's get it straight. He was a light bearer. That is what he was. He was an angel. That's what Satan was. Yep. Then he decided he was not content with the position in what God had put him in. Well, I'm going to just take this thing over. That's right. mm. I, I'll run it. I'm going to exalt my throne above the stars of the Most High. Mm. That's what he said. And I'm going to be like the Most High. That's right. Evil was found in him, that is when the Lord cast him down, and that is when the die was cast, that he would go into the fire. That is when. So now, Lord created man, and he created all man to get salvation, to have access to this salvation. So if you don't get it, it would be because of his shortcoming, because he chose not to do the things that he uh, was supposed to do in order to get salvation. So now, he's saying to the stranger here, neither let the son of the stranger that have joined himself to the Lord speak, saying that the Lord have utterly separated me from his people. Go ahead, continue to read. Speak, saying, uh -huh. the Lord hath utterly separated me from his people. Go ahead and read. Neither let the eunuch say, behold, I am a dry tree. Now, who is telling you this? Isaiah telling you this or the Lord is telling you this? Who is telling you this? Thus said the Lord, it said, didn't it? Mm -hmm. It's always the Lord. I keep saying it, but some, for some reason it don't register. You know, people, pe people need to pay attention. Well, one thing, they don't want to read no Bible. That's the first thing. You can't even put a gun in their head and make them read the Bible. They'll talk God all day, but they ain't going to read no Bible. That's right. But they need to read the Bible. Then they won't be making these false statements about, you know, this is for Israel, and that is for the Jews, and it's the Jews' Passover, and, uh, and it's, it's the Jews' Sabbath. And uh, if you read the Bible, it'll tell you who's it is. Just read the Bible and go with that. But don't nobody want to do that. Everybody want to come up with their own opinion, which means absolutely nothing. nothing. So now, 
We're going to deal with the stranger here and show you what the Lord said to the stranger. Skip down to verse 6. Go ahead and read it, bro. Also, the son of the stranger that joined themselves to the Lord uh -huh. to serve him Go ahead. and to love the name of the Lord. Now, he said the son of the stranger that will join themselves to the Lord to serve him and love the name of the Lord. Go ahead, continue to read. To be his servant. To be his servants. Go ahead and read. Everyone that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it uh -huh. and taketh hold of my covenant. And notice what he said. Everyone that will keep the Sabbath day from polluting it and take hold of God's covenant. Now, he's talking to the stranger here, but he said to those that will serve him and be his servant, those that will keep the Sabbath from polluting it and those that will take hold of uh, to God's covenant. If they will do that, then this is what the Lord said I will do for them. Go ahead, continue to read. Even them will I bring to my holy mountain. But, but there are stipulations that come with it, isn't it? He said, you know, if they do all of this, he said, then even them will I bring to my holy mountain. Well, back in, 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 in uh, 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 Leviticus, we read, where the Lord told Moses, go speak unto the children of Israel and tell them to keep the Sabbath. Yes, sir. So if you didn't get beyond that, you would think that it was only for the children of Israel, then what? Yes, sir. But now the Lord is making it very clear here that even the stranger that will serve the Lord and that will be his servant must keep the Sabbath day and must keep the covenant. And then the Lord said, if they will do that, then I will bring them to my holy mountain. Well, that's the same thing Israel got to do, ain't it? Ain't they got to keep their hand from doing any evil? Ain't they got to keep the Sabbath from polluting it? Don't they have to take hold to the covenant? Yes. Mm -hmm. So why would it be any different for the stranger then? You're going you're gonna to set, now you're going to tell Israel, you know, you got to do all this if you want to be saved. But you're going to turn around and say to a Gentile, well, you ain't got to do nothing. Just open your mouth and say, I believe. You can lie, steal, commit adultery, murder, do whatever you want to do. As long as you open your mouth and say, I believe. Do that make any kind of sense to you? Wouldn't that be a respect to a person? You got to struggle to keep your flesh in check because you happen to be born an Israelite. And because he happened to be born a Gentile, he ain't got to do nothing but open his mouth and say, I believe. Sometimes, some of the things people say, if they thought about it, they wouldn't even say it. They just say, no, I ain't going to say that. No, that's <laughs> now, he said to the stranger, you know, uh, keep the covenant, uh, 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 keep the Sabbath day from blue net. Even then will I bring to my holy mountain, my house will be called a house of prayer for all people. Go ahead. Did you finish it? Go ahead and finish it. And make them joyful in my house of prayer. Go ahead. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices shall be accepted upon mine altar. Go ahead. For mine house shall be called a house of prayer for all people. So now, but there was stimulation that came with it, wasn't it? Let's go over to now. That was a Sabbath day. But when you go back and read it, back in the law, it seemed as if it was for Israel, didn't it? But now, then, but now you read this, it makes it very clear that it was for everybody. Let's go now to, uh, let's go now to uh, 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 Acts chapter 13, and we'll pick it up at uh, verse 13. Acts chapter 13, and we'll begin reading at verse 13. 13 and 13. 13 and 13. 13 and 13. Now, this is Paul, the apostle to the Gentiles here. And he's dealing with uh, some Gentiles here, 13 and 13. Okay, go ahead and read, brother. Now, when Paul and his company loosed from Paphos, uh -huh. they came to Perga and in Pamphylia. And can John, departing from them, return to Jerusalem? Uh -huh. But when they departed from Pergai, they came to Antioch in Pisidia mm -hmm. and went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and sat down. Now, and then they went into the synagogue, it said, on the Sabbath day, and they sat down. But I want you to notice who was there in the synagogue on the Sabbath day. Because, you know, you would, you would probably think that it was just Israel sitting there. But we're going to find out that was not the case. It was Israel sitting there. But it was the strangers sitting there as well. And why were they sitting there? Because the law said uh, that in order for them to get salvation, then this is what they had to do. Now, start reading at uh, verse uh, 42. Skip down to verse 42. Okay, go ahead and read, brother. 
And when the Jews were going out of the synagogue, uh -huh. the Gentiles besought that these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath. Now, after the Jews was gone out of the synagogue, then the Gentiles, they besought that these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath day. Because so now we find out not only did you had the Jews sitting there on the Sabbath day, but you had the Gentiles, they were sitting there as well because they understood whatever God had given to Israel, they had to do the same identical thing if they wanted to get salvation. I want you to keep in mind when we read about this circumcision, what did God say, Abraham, your natural seed, but the stranger as well. Yes, sir. And said, if he will not get circumcised, then he shall be cut off from my people. He has broken the covenant. Just keep that stuff in mind. You know, when we get over here and start reading uh, what, uh, what uh, the, uh, the disciples initially, I'm going to say initially too, came up with when they started to deal with the Gentile and the issue of circumcision came up concerning the Gentile. Cause that's what it came up concerning. Israel, Israel never had an argument over about whether we not uh, got to be circumcised or not. You know, Israel, they was always pushing circumcision as if circumcision in itself was sufficient in itself. Mm -hmm. It was all circumcised, circumcised, circumcised. You been circumcised? You mean you you un you uncircumcised? You know, they always call people uncircumcised. Mm -hmm. But they were circumcised in the flesh, but not in the heart. We're gonna get to the heart circumcision uh, a little bit later, because as I said, everybody gonna get that, whether they are male, female, Jew, Gentile, does not matter. Let's uh, uh, continue reading. So now, uh, 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 you know, the Gentiles, they were sitting there in the synagogue on the Sabbath day. Go ahead, continue reading. Verse 43. Read it. Now, when the congregation was broken up, mm -hmm. many of the Jews and religious proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas, uh -huh. who, speaking to them, persuaded them to continue in the grace of God. Uh -huh. And the next Sabbath day came almost the whole city together to hear the word of God. So now, you know, my, my point is you had the Jews sitting there, and they were doing the Sabbath day. You had the Gentiles sitting there as well, and they were doing the Sabbath day as well. Now we are going to deal with this issue of circumcision that came up uh, as to whether or not the Gentiles need to be circumcised. But people, they like to try and use this for everybody. They done messed it up. But they like to try and use it for everybody, saying that nobody needs to be circumcised. Well, the, the question never came up regarding the Jews, but it did come up uh, uh, regarding the Gentiles here. And, uh, and, and we're going to pick it up uh, where this issue came up. Let's start reading at Acts chapter 15. And we'll begin reading at uh, verse 1, uh, Acts 15. And we'll pick it up at verse 1, 15 and 1. Go ahead and read, brother. And certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said, Except ye be circumcised after the manner of Moses, ye cannot be saved. Now it says certain men that came down from Judea, they taught the brethren and they said, Except ye be circumcised after the manner of Moses, you cannot be saved. And they had a valid argument with that too as well. You understand what I'm saying? Reading, I know they had a valid argument with that is is because when God gave the circumcision, he said, Abraham, your natural seed and the stranger that is not of your seed, if they are not circumcised, they shall be cut off from my people because they have broken the covenant. Mm -hmm. So these, these brothers, they had a valid argument here. Go ahead, continue reading. Now, I'm inclined to agree with them too. I'm going to tell you that right now. Mm -hmm. But we're going to find out some here that, uh, you know, they, they argued over it and all of that, and then they made a decision, but nobody ever came up with no real scripture to support their decision. Go ahead, continue reading, brother. When therefore Paul and uh. Barnabas had no small dissension. Now he said Paul and Barnabas, you know what no small dissension mean? That mean they had one big blowout. I mean, they was arguing over this thing. You know, they saying, well, they got to be circumcised. They going to be saved. Paul and Barnabas said, well, no, you ain't Gentile. They ain't got to be saved. We're going to find out something. We're going to find out what Paul, the decision that the disciples made, but we're going to find out, too, that they didn't totally stick with that after they made it, though. Go ahead, continue reading. 
and disputation with them, uh -huh. they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain other of, the, of them should go up to Jerusalem unto the apostles and elders about this question. So now he said, well, well we, you know, after they had this big blowout, I said, well, we need to go back up to Jerusalem to the apostles and the elders about this question. And, you know, we all, we're going to sit down, we're going to hash this thing out, and we're going to determine what should be done with these Gentiles regarding circumcision here. But we're going to find out they made a decision. We're going to find out as well. They didn't stick with that decision very long either. Go ahead, continue to read. Three. Uh-huh. And being brought on their way by the church, Go ahead. they passed through Penance uh -huh. and Samaria, Go declaring ahead. the conversion of the Gentiles. Uh -huh. And they caused great joy unto all the brethren. And when they were come to Jerusalem, they were received of the church and of the apostles and elders, and they declared all things that God had done with them. You know, and as they were on their way, because they were going back up to Jerusalem and do as they had been asked to do. You know, go and meet with the apostles and the elders concerning this question. And then as they were on their way, you know, they passed through these various places here, and they were rejoicing that the Gentiles had now been converted and that they now come into the word of God. Go ahead, continue to read. But there rose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees, which believing... Now, the Pharisees, they was a religious sect of Jews. But these ones, they believed, you know, they always kick against Jesus and against the disciples and all of them. But these happened to be some that had been converted, and they believed. So now, he said, and, and, and there rose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees, which believed... Saying, go ahead, continue to read. Saying uh -huh. that it was needful to circumcise them and command them to keep the law of Moses. And saying that it was need for them to be circumcised and, 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 and commanded them that they should keep the law of Moses. Go ahead, continue to read. And the apostles and elders came together for to consider of this matter. And then they came down to consider this matter, because that is why they had gone back up to Jerusalem you know, to, uh, to discuss this thing among the disciples uh, 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 and among the elders that were there uh, uh, and, and said when they came together to consider this matter. Go ahead, continue to read. And when there had been much disputing, uh -huh. Peter rose up and said unto them, Go ahead. Men and brethren, ye know how that a good while ago God made choice among us uh -huh. that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. Now, you know, and then as they were there, because they had them all there. And then as they were all there, then Peter, uh, 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 then Peter rose up and said, you know, the Lord made a decision by my mouth that I should go and... Uh, and speak unto the Gentiles to hear the word of the gospel and believe and, and which the Lord did. Because he's talking about uh, when the Lord first got ready to start converting the Gentile, he sent Peter unto Cornelius the Italian. But Peter, and, and he said, by my mouth and believe. But Peter didn't say anything about, no, he ain't said nothing about, yeah, I went back to these Gentiles and I preached unto those, uh, but, but I, I baptized him. He didn't say that. You understand what I'm saying? There was some things that should have been said here at this big meeting that they had that was not said. Go ahead, continue to read. And God, which knoweth the heart, uh -huh. bear them witness, Go giving ahead. them the Holy Ghost, uh -huh. even as he did unto us. Go ahead and read. And put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Go ahead and read. Now, therefore... Why tempt ye God mm -hmm. to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? Now, he said, now, what yoke is this? I, I circumcised the yoke. You eight days old. Mm -hmm. You don't know nothing about nothing. So how is it a yoke? Go ahead, continue to read. But we believe uh -huh. that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved even as they. So he said, but we believe that uh, by the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ that we shall be saved as well as they. Go ahead, continue reading. Now, Paul is going to stand up and he's going to make his statement. You know, Peter has said what he said about how the Lord chose him to first go to the Gentiles and preach unto those that believe in what he did. And he went and preached unto Cornelius. Now, Paul is going to stand up and he's going to have his say because Paul was the one that was really chosen to be an apostle to the Gentiles. Go ahead, continue to read. Then all the multitude kept silence mm -hmm. and gave audience to Barnabas and Paul. Go ahead. Declaring what miracles and wonders God had wrought among the Gentiles by them. Now, and then they stood up and they had their say about all that God had done 
uh, uh, with the Gentiles by their hands. So, you know, everybody had they say about what God had done with the Gentiles. Uh, and now James, one of the apostles, he going to stand up and he going to have his say as well. Because everybody had they say because the issue was about whether or not the Gentile need to be circumcised. was not about whether everybody need to be circumcised. Uh, it was not about whether the Jew needed to be circumcised. It was about whether or not the Gentile needed to be circumcised. So Peter had stood up and had his say about the Gentile. He, Paul, now he stood up and had his say. Now James going to stand up and he going to have his say. Go ahead and read. And after they had held their peace, uh -huh. James answered, saying, uh -huh. Men and brethren, hearken unto me. Now, you know, now after Paul had his say, now James stood up, and he going to say, Men and brethren, hearken unto me. Go ahead, continue to read. Simon uh -huh. hath declared how God at the first did visit the Gentiles to take out of them a people for his name. Now, Simon, he, and he, he said, well, you know, Simon, which was Peter, he, you know, he stood up and declared how uh, 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 God declared how uh, the, uh, he had used him to go to the Gentiles. Go ahead, continue to read. And to this agree the words of the prophets uh -huh. as it is written. And he said to this agree the words of the prophets as it is written. Go ahead, continue to read. After this will I return uh -huh. and will build again the tabernacle of David, go which ahead. he has fallen down. Uh -huh. And I will build again the ruins thereof, and I will set it up. Now, we ain't going to bother reading it, but he's quoting from Amos chapter 9. And if you go and read it, it had nothing to do with no Gentile being circumcised or not being circumcised. All you got to do is go back and read it. It didn't say nothing about no Gentile being circumcised or not being circumcised. Nevertheless, James stood up and he quoted that scripture. Ain't nobody said nothing about what God, the covenant that God made. with. Ain't nobody said nothing about that. Nobody said nothing about that God made this covenant with Abraham and with his natural seed and with the stranger, that, uh, uh, how that if he did not get circumcised, he had broken the covenant and he would be cut off from God's people. Nobody said nothing about the fact that you could not keep the Passover if you were not circumcised, whether you were Israel or a stranger. Nobody said nothing about that. But he, now, James has stood up, he done quoted some that if you go back and read it, it ain't got nothing to do with no circumcising or not circumcising of no Gentiles. Go ahead, continue to read. That the residue of men uh -huh. might seek after the Lord. Go ahead. And all the Gentiles upon whom my name is called, saith the Lord, who doth all these things. Go ahead and read. Known unto God are all his works uh -huh. from the beginning of the world. Wherefore, my sentence is. Wait a minute, he didn't say what. Notice what he said. Wherefore, my sentence is. Not wherefore, the word of God said, but he said, wherefore, my sentence. You know, because, you know, I mean, they were rejoicing that the Gentiles had come into this thing, and, 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 and they sort of overreacted a little bit because what they were trying not to do is overburden these people. You know, you get people that first come into the word of God. You done done everything. You understand, you've been out there, you've been serving some other God, and y'all do this, and y'all do this, and y'all do this. No, none of you do what really the Word of God say you're supposed to do. So now these people start to come in the Word, and then you try to not overburden them with certain things. Mm -hmm. You know, because you, you, you're afraid if you start to overburden them, you're afraid you might frighten them away. So, well, you know, I ain't going to tell them that they got to do this, and they got to do this, and they got to do this, and they got to stop doing that, and they got to stop doing that, and they got to stop doing that. Hey, look at you, say, huh? <laughs> I don't want that church. Y'all got too many do's and don'ts up in there, so I don't want to go there. So, you know, this was the thing. They overreacted because their whole intent was not to overburden them with things that they were not used to doing. So they sort of overreacting there, and ain't nobody saying nothing about what the Lord, because the Lord gave the circumcision, people. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said, don't, get, don't keep no Passover, whether you are Israel or the stranger, if you have not been circumcised. The Lord said that. But now here they are talking about where my sentence is, <laughs> that we don't overburden them. Go ahead. What is his sentence? Go ahead and read. 
Wherefore my sentence is uh -huh. that we trouble them not, which are from among the Gentiles, which which from among the Gentiles are turned to God. Now he said, my, he said my sentence is is that we trouble them not, which from among the Gentiles have turned unto God. Skip down to uh, verse uh, twenty four. Go ahead and read. For as much as we have heard that certain which went out from us uh -huh. have troubled you with words. Now, you know, they done sent back up this, 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 these people here, and, 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 and he told them to uh, say to the Gentiles, for as much as we have heard that certain which went out from us have troubled you with words. Go ahead, continue to read. Subverting your souls, saying, uh -huh. ye must be circumcised, uh -huh. and keep the law, uh -huh. to whom we gave no such commandment. So now, you know, all this thing was trying to keep them overburdening these people with it, and that's what it was really about. And, and he said, now, you know, uh, uh, for we have heard that certain came out from us, and they have said that you must be circumcised and keep the law, and they saying, we didn't, we didn't tell them to tell you that. Go ahead, continue to read. It seemed good unto us, uh -huh. being assembled with one accord. Now, they said it seemed good unto us, but ain't nobody said yet what God said do and don't do. Ain't nobody said nothing about that. All this is trying to keep them from overburdening these people with things that uh, apparently they feel might drive them away. But we're going to find out that they backed up off of that decision real quick. Go ahead, continue to read. To seeing chosen men unto you with our beloved Barnabas and Paul, uh -huh. men that have hazarded their lives for the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh -huh. We have sent therefore Judas and Silas, who shall also tell you the same things by mouth. Go ahead. For it seemed good to the Holy Ghost and to us uh -huh. to lay upon you no greater burden than these necessary things. See what it says, seemed good to the Holy Ghost and to us that we lay, lay up on you no greater burden than these few things here. But I'm going to notice these, I want you to pay attention to these few things that they said that they, uh, that the only thing they're going to lay up on them. Go ahead, continue to read. That ye abstain from meats offered to idols. Now he said that you abstain from meat offered to idols. Go ahead, continue to read. And from blood. And from blood. Go ahead, continue to read. And from things strangled. Uh huh. And from fornication. Go ahead. From which, if ye keep yourselves, ye shall do well. You shall do well. Fare ye well. Well, he ain't said nothing about lying. Okay. <laughs> he ain't said nothing about stealing, did he? He ain't said nothing about keeping the Sabbath or none of that stuff. Did he say anything about any of that stuff? No, sir. My sin is here that we don't lay up on you no greater burden than, uh, uh, you know, you, you keep yourself from, uh, 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 from meats offered up to idols and, uh, and, 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 uh, and, and, from, and, and from blood and from things strangled. Ain't said nothing about all them commandments that God gave. So what is he saying? That y'all ain't got to do them? You're a Gentile, y'all ain't got to do that. I mean, you can go, a Gentile can go and steal, lie, commit adultery, do all that stuff, right? Ain't got to keep no sign, ain't got to do nothing. Pay attention to what you're reading here, people. I'm going to show you something. Let's turn, let, let's go to, uh, 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 let's go to Acts chapter 16, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Acts chapter 16, and we're going to begin reading at verse 1. Acts 16. And we began reading at verse 1, 16 and 1. I'm going to show you shortly after that, after their decision, I'm going to show you what Paul did. Because Paul here is about to circumcise Timothy, who is a Gentile. Acts chapter 16, and well, we just left 15, didn't we? Yes, sir. So shortly after that, this is what Paul did with a Gentile here. Go ahead and start reading in Acts 16. And, and, and pick it up at verse 1. Because the thing it is, it appeared as if they sort of got caught up in the, in the moment. You know, they rejoiced and they glad the Gentiles and came in and all of that stuff. So it appears as if they sort of got caught up in the moment there for a while. But sooner or later, reality going to kick in and you're going to come back down to earth. Start reading in Acts 16. And began reading at verse. Now, this is Paul, the apostle to the Gentile, and he's dealing with Timothy here, that is called Th Timotheus. But this is Timothy that we are uh, dealing with here, and it's going to let you know he is a Gentile. 
It's going to let you know as well that Paul circumcised him. Start reading that verse 1. Go ahead and read. Then came he to Derby and Lystra, and behold, a certain disciple was there named Timotheus. Go ahead. The son of a certain woman, which was a Jewess, uh -huh. and believed, but his father was a Greek. Well, that means he was a Greek. Mm -hmm. You know, his mama uh, was a Jewish, and she believed, but his father was a Greek. That meant that he was a Greek. He was a, he was, he, he was a Gentile, in other words. But look at what Paul did with him. Go ahead, continue to read. Which was well reported of by the brethren go ahead. that were at Lystra and in Canaan. Go ahead, me. Him would Paul have to go forth with, uh -huh. and took the circum and took and circumcised him because of the Jews which were in those quarters, uh -huh. for they knew all that his father was a Greek. Well, Paul circumcised him then, didn't he? Mm -hmm. Even though he was well, what happened to the big argument? <laughs> now he done took him, and he done say, God told you sooner or later. Reality going to kick in, you're going to come back down to earth. You know, you're going to get uh, 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 caught up in your emotions for a while, but at some point, reality going to kick in. And I'm going to show you some other things, too, uh, and that, that, uh, that he said regarding circumcision. Let's go to Romans chapter 2, and we'll pick it up at verse 25. Romans 2, and we'll begin reading at verse 25. Romans 2 and 25. 2 and 25. This is what Paul is is uh, 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 saying here, and, and 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 because you know it was always a thing because with with, with Israel, because you had these uh, Israelites that always followed Paul around, and they were always condemning what he, you know, him trying to teach the Gentiles and trying to get the Gentiles to convert, and he was always, you know. Uh, trying to tell people, well, you know, y'all need to do this and y'all need to do that and all of that. But now, pick it up at verse 25. Go ahead and read, brother. For circumcision verily profiteth, mm -hmm. if thou keep the law. Wait a minute, this is Paul here talking. Mm -hmm. He said, it is good if you keep the law. And, and I said the same thing, too. Well, Israel was circumcised when they came out the wilderness, wasn't it? But God killed them all, didn't he? And he told you why he killed them all. Why did he say he killed them all? Because they would not obey his commandments. So Paul is saying the very same thing here. It is good if you keep the law. But if you ain't keeping no law, you might as well not even be circumcised. So he said, it is good if you keep the law. Go ahead and continue to read. But if thou be a breaker of the law, uh -huh. thy circumcision is made uncircumcision. He said, but if you be a breaker of the law, your circumcision is made uncircumcised, just like you're not even circumcised. You know, you, you, you circumcised, they even did it when you was eight days old. But now you're doing everything contrary to the law. Where do you think you're going to wind up at? So it is good, and Paul is the one that is saying this. He say it is good if thou keepest the law. But he's going to bring in another kind of circumcision here that didn't begin with Paul either. Go ahead, continue to read. Therefore, uh -huh. if the uncircumcision keep the righteousness of the law, Go ahead. shall not his son's circumcision be counted for circumcision? Uh -huh. and, not, and shall not uncircumcision, which is by nature, if it fulfill the law, judge thee, who by the letter and circumcision does transgress the law? Uh -huh. For he is not a Jew, which he is one outwardly, neither is that circumcised circumcision, which is outward in the flesh. Now he say, well, he is, he is a Jew. You. That don't change. But he ain't dealing fleshly right now. No, sir. You understand what I'm saying? But he said he is not a Jew, uh, 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 which, uh, 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 but he is not a Jew which is one outwardly, neither is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh. Well, it is circumcision. Who gave it? God I gave mean, it, didn't he? Yes, and he sir. said circumcised the foreskin. In other words, the flesh, didn't he? But that ain't what Paul is saying to these people here. What he's saying to them here, you know, even though you've been circumcised in the flesh, that is circumcision, and that circumcision must be done because God said it must be done. Mm -hmm. But the real circumcision is circumcision in the heart because you can get go circumcised in the flesh all you want to, and if you ain't circumcised in the heart, guess where your resting place going to be? So that... And, and, and what the, the thing that he's trying to stress here, the real important circumcision 
is to be circumcised in the heart. Because circumcision in the flesh, that's easy. Go find your doctor, say, cut it off. Bam, it's done. You through with it. Ain't got no worry about it ever again. Circumcision of the heart, you got to deal with it 24-7. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes, sir. Every day, I got to find a way to keep this flesh from doing any wickedness. Yes, sir. Every day, all day, I got to try to find a way to keep this flesh from doing any wickedness. Absolutely. But when, right. they, when I went and got circumcised, they said, bam, I'm done. And never got to worry about that one ever again. So this the circumcision in the flesh, that's easy. It's the circumcision in the heart. That is the one that you really got an issue with. Go ahead, continue reading. And that's the point that Paul is trying to make uh, to these people here. Go ahead, continue reading. Verse 29. Read it. But he is a Jew, which uh -huh. is one inwardly. But he is a Jew, which is one inwardly. Go ahead, continue reading. And circumcision is that of the heart. And circumcision is that of the heart. Go ahead, continue reading. In the spirit. Uh-huh. And not in the letter. Go ahead. Whose praise is not of man, but of God. Whose praise is not of man, but of God. Because, you know, he, he's saying this against the Jew because they was always praising, you know, you, you've been circumcised. I've been circumcised. You ain't been circumcised, you uncircumcised. I've been circumcised. <laughs> Praise a man, but not a God. The thing God really, he wants you to get circumcised in the flesh too, because he said that. But the circumcision he really wants you to focus on is the circumcision of the heart. Everybody, male, female, don't really matter. You got to get this one. Help you to understand what this circumcision of the heart is. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 10. And we're going to pick it up at verse 12 because the circumcision of the heart did not start with, with Paul. Because, you know, every, when you get in the New Testament, you know, everybody want to throw away the circumcision in the flesh and they want to deal with the circumcision of the heart as if that's where circumcision of the heart started. Circumcision of the heart, guess where it started? It started all the way back in the days of Moses, all the way back in the Old Testament. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 10 and pick it up at uh, verse 12. Deuteronomy 10, and pick it up at verse 12. Go ahead and read, brother. And now, Israel, what doth the Lord thy God require of thee? Now, he said, now, Israel, what do the Lord thy God require of thee? This is what the Lord uh, thy God require of thee. Go ahead, continue to read. But to fear the Lord thy God, uh -huh. to walk in all his ways. Now, he said, this is what the Lord thy God require of thee, to fear the Lord thy God, and to walk in all of his ways. Go ahead, continue to read. And to love him, uh -huh. and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart uh -huh. and with all thy soul, to keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes. Now he said to love him, and to fear the Lord, and to keep his commandments and his statutes. Go ahead, read. continue to read. Which I command thee this day uh -huh. for thy good. He said, I'm doing this for your good, because when you get them commandments, they for your good. Everybody want to uh, kick against them, but guess what? They are for your good. That's what they for. Don't, don't nobody, don't nobody want to do them, but the Lord gave them, as we are reading here, they are for your good. Every commandment that God gave is for your good. That's what it's for. Go ahead, continue reading. Behold, the heaven and the heaven of heavens uh -huh. is the Lord's, thy God. The earth also with all that is therein, that therein is. Uh -huh. Only the Lord had a delight in thy fathers to love them. Go ahead. And he chose their seed after them, even you above all people, as it is this day. Go ahead. Circumcise therefore the foreskin of your heart, uh -huh. and be no more stiff-necked. Oh, you mean you got the circumcision of the heart all the way back in the Old Testament, even in the book of the law? Yes, sir. So it didn't start with Paul then, did it? Cause that's when they, that's, that's what they want to do. They want to run over there in the New Testament, see circumcision of the heart. See, it used to be circumcision of the flesh, but now it's circumcision of the heart. Well, circumcision of the heart started back here. Yes, that's the first place you read circumcision of the heart by. Absolutely, brother. So now, he's saying that, you know, what do the Lord require thee to love the Lord and to keep his commandments and to fear the Lord and to do his statutes? Circumcise therefore the foreskin of your heart and be no more stiff-necked. In other words, do what you're told. That's what stiff-necked is, isn't it? Not doing what you're told. Ain't that what it is? Yeah, he says, sure. stop. Uh, you, you know, don't be no more stiff-necked. Do what you're told. Right. Circumcise, therefore, the foreskin of your heart. Something got to be removed. You know, and the flesh, 
you have to put away the foreskin. When you get circumcised in the heart, what you got to put away? You got to put away the wickedness. Yes, sir. I'm going to show you that's what you got to put away. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 4, and we'll pick it up at verse 1. Jeremiah chapter 4, and we'll begin reading at verse 1. Jeremiah 4, and pick it up at verse 1. 4 and 1. 4 and 1. Because that's what circumcising of the heart is, putting away the wickedness. Mm -hmm. Four and one. Mm. So, so look like we got this circumcision of the heart a few places in the Old Testament, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. yes, sir. And I thought that was a New Testament thing. Mm. Mm. Starting to find out some stuff here, aren't we? Amen. Start reading at four and pick it up at verse one. Go ahead and read, brother. If thou wilt return, O Israel, uh -huh. saith the Lord, Go ahead. return unto me. Uh -huh. And if thou wilt put away thine abominations out of my sight, then shalt thou not remove. So you know the Lord is getting ready to kick Israel out of the land. So now he's saying, now if you will return, O Israel, unto me. Because the Lord told Israel, you know, when you get in the land, if you get in there and you start breaking my commandments, then I'm going to kick you out. And the Lord, he had already kicked out the ten tribes, and now he was about to kick Judah out for a while, for about 70 years. He would let them come back and stay there for a while. Then he would kick them out again, and that's why we're sitting here today, okay? okay. So now, uh, he said, now, uh, 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 O Israel, if you will return unto me, and if thou wilt put away your abominations out of my sight, then thou shalt not remove. I, I'll leave in the land, in other words. Go ahead, continue reading. And thou shalt swear, uh -huh. the Lord liveth Go in ahead. truth, in judgment, uh -huh. and in righteousness. Go ahead. And the nation shall bless themselves in him, and in him shall they glory. Go ahead. For thus saith the Lord to the men of Judah and Jerusalem, uh -huh. Break up your fellow ground, and sow not among thorns. Go ahead, read. Circumcise yourselves to the Lord, uh -huh. and take away the foreskins of your heart. Wait a minute. Circumcise yourself to the Lord, and take away the foreskin of your heart. You know what this foreskin of the heart that you ought to take away? It is the wickedness, and we're going to read that in just a minute. But finish that verse, then we're going to skip to verse 14. Go ahead and read it, bro. Ye men of Judah uh -huh. and inhabitants of Jerusalem, Go ahead. lest my fury come forth like fire mm. and burn that none can quench it Go because ahead. of the evil of your doings. See what it says? It says, circumcise yourselves to the Lord and take away the foreskins of your heart. Ye men of Judah, ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, these my fury come forth like fire and burn that none can quench it because of the evil of your doings. Skip down now to verse 14, and I'm going to show you what this foreskin of the heart that you must put away. Verse 14. Go ahead, continue to read. O Jerusalem, uh -huh. wash thine heart from wickedness. Look what he said, O Jerusalem, wash your heart from wickedness. How do you wash your heart from wickedness? By stop doing wickedness. That's how you wash your heart from it. That is the circumcising of the heart. That is the putting away the foreskin of the heart. You put away the wickedness. Go ahead, finish that verse. That thou mayest be saved. Uh -huh. How long shall thy vain thoughts lodge within thee? He said that you might be saved, and how long will your vain thoughts lodge within you? Start reading now. Let's go to Colossians chapter 2, and we'll pick it up at verse 11. So now we see here, you know, this circumcising of the heart, it didn't start over in the New Testament. You know, they were telling you of that even over in the Old Testament, that they were telling you about circumcising of the heart. You had to do the flesh, but you had to do the heart as well. Let's start reading here now at uh, 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 Colossians chapter 2. And we we'll began reading at uh, verse 11, Colossians 2 and verse 11, 2 and 11. 2 and 11. Okay, go ahead and read, bro. In whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands. Well, what is the circumcision made without hands? Circumcision made without hands, that is the circumcision of the heart. Circumcision made with hands, that's when somebody cuts the foreskin off. But the circumcision made without hands, that is the circumcision of the heart. He said, in whom also you are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands. 
In doing what? Go ahead, continue to read. In putting off the body of the sins of the flesh. See what I say? In putting off the body of the sins of the flesh. Go ahead, continue to read. By the circumcision of Christ. By the circumcision of Christ. Go ahead, read. Buried with him in baptism. Uh -huh. Wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God who hath raised him from the dead. Now he said, buried with him in baptism. Because baptism, that is when you start to put away the sins of the flesh by baptism. That's when you find, that's, the, that's the initial step that you take in putting away the foreskin of the flesh. That's the initial step that you take. Show you what I'm talking about here. Let's go to Acts chapter 2, and we'll pick it up at verse 36. Acts 2, we'll begin reading at verse 36. 2 and 36. 2 and 36. Because so that's step one. You know, your salvation starts here. Your salvation starts with repentance and then being baptized in the name of Jesus. That's when you start to put away the sins of the flesh. That's when you start to put it away. Okay. And I'm going to show you what it means by that as well. Now, let's first go to Acts chapter 2, and we'll pick it up at uh, verse 36. Acts 2 began reading at verse 36. Okay, go ahead and read, brother. Therefore, let all the his house of Israel know assuredly. Now, you know what the Lord is saying to the house of Israel uh, uh, by the mouth of Peter. He said the same thing to the Gentile in Acts chapter 10. He said, let them know assuredly. Go ahead, continue to read. That God hath made that same Jesus, whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Go ahead, read. Now, when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart uh -huh. and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles. Now, when they heard it, they were sorry. They were pricked in their heart because these were among the people that had crucified him. And, you know, Peter just sort of running this thing down to him. You know, tell him, you know, the one that y'all crucified, you know, he was both Lord and Christ. You done, in other words, y'all done crucified the Messiah, man. Mm -hmm. Y'all done crucified the Lord. And when they heard that, because they thought that they just crucified some man that some rose up claiming to be uh, the Messiah and all of that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, so it, that's what they thought they had, they, they had done. Mm -hmm. But now they done broke it down to them, man. You know, y'all the one that y'all crucified, Lord that made him both Lord and Christ. Now you scared. When they heard that, they was pricked in their heart. They were sorry, and they asked, well, what can I do, man? You know, we, I, done, I done did an awful thing here. What can I do? And this is what they were told. Go ahead, continue to read. Men and brethren, uh -huh. what shall we do? Go ahead and read. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, uh -huh. for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And I'm going to say right now, until you do this, you are yet in your sins, and you are going to die in your sins. I don't care who you are. And don't let anybody ever tell you any different. Until you repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus, you are you're in your sins, and you are going to die in your sins, just as uh, 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 Jesus said in the eighth chapter of John. If you don't believe I am he, you are, you are, you are going to die in your sin until you in them. You don't want to die in your sins, people. No, sir. Until you do this, you're going to be held accountable for all of that stuff that you've been doing. You know all the stuff. <laughs> Until you do it. You are yet in them, and if you don't ever do it, you are going to die in them. Take, be clear about that. So it's up to you. But this is where it all starts. This is, all where, this is where it all starts in putting away the body of the sin, being circumcised in the heart. Start reading here now. Let's go to uh, uh, let's go to Romans chapter six, and we'll pick it up at verse one. Romans six, and we'll begin reading at verse one. Six and one. We're dealing with the circumcision of the heart now. That is what we are dealing with here, and this is how you go about being circumcised in the heart. Cause you gotta get it. I don't care who you are. You gotta get it. Start reading at Romans six, and pick it up at verse 1, Romans 6, and began reading at verse 1, 6 and 1. Okay, go ahead and read, brother. 
What shall we say then? Mm -hmm. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Wait a minute. You know, after you get baptized, after you repent and get baptized, you're under grace, and until you do that, you're not under grace. I know what they told you. You know, Jews under the law and Gentiles under grace. No. Everybody is under the law, and you're only under grace when you repent and get baptized. That's when you come under grace. Until you do that, you are under the penalty of the law. Go ahead, continue to read. God forbid. God forbid. Go ahead and read. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Well, baptism is about dying to sin. That is what it's about. It is about when they take you and submerge you in that water. That represents the death and burial of the old you. And when they bring you up, it represents the resurrection of a new you. One is saying that I am going to walk in a newness of life. I'm going to become a new creature. I'm going to bury that old creature. Go ahead, continue to read. Know ye not uh -huh. that so many of us, as were baptized into Jesus Christ, Go ahead. were baptized into his death. Go ahead, read. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, uh -huh. that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, uh -huh. even so we also should walk in newness of life. That's what you said when you got baptized. I'm going to walk in a newness of life. You didn't say I would never sin again. You said that you would not serve sin from that time forth. That's what you said. I'm not going to say, in other words, I'm going to make every effort not to willfully sin. But if you should, in that burden of sin, you have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. Thank God for him. Yes, sir. And Praise thank God, God for Jesus. his great mercy. Otherwise, the whole creation would be cut off. Go ahead and continue to read. Five. Uh -huh. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, Go ahead. we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection, uh -huh. knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him. Wait a minute, knowing this, notice what it said. That old man is crucified. We, I'm going to show you in a minute what that old man is that have been crucified with him. Go ahead, continue to read. That the body of sin might be destroyed, uh -huh. that henceforth we should not serve sin. And notice what he said, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. Let's go and take a look at that old man. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 4. And we'll begin reading at verse 17. Ephesians chapter 4, and we'll pick it up at verse 17. And this is the being circumcised in the heart, people. This is what it is. It means the putting away the wickedness. The putting away of that old man. That is what the circumcision of the heart is. And I'm going to show you what that is about. Start reading here at Ephesians uh, 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 chapter 4. And we began reading at verse 17. Ephesians 4 and verse 17. Four and, now this is Paul here, and he's talking to the Gentiles here. But I'm going to notice, notice what, he, what, 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 what he's going to say to these Gentiles here. Remember, you know, they, they are, they are, they are, their decision was that, uh, 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 you know, the, the Gentiles didn't need to be circumcised, but he turned right around and circumcised one. Mm -hmm. May have even been the next day. He turned right around. In the 15th chapter, he said, they, they, you know, their decision was that they didn't need to be circumcised. But then in the 16th chapter, he circumcised one, didn't he? Mm -hmm. I told you, some point, reality is going to kick in. Okay. And, you know, all that emotional stuff, it's going to all come down to earth one day. Yes, sir. And reality is going to kick in, and you're going to say, well, you know, I kind of got caught up in it. Yes, sir. But this is how it's got to be done, y'all. This is how it's really got to be done now. Because, you know, sometimes out of love and rejoicing, you try to soften stuff for people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I love him, so I, I know he don't want to quit eating pork. So I ain't going to tell him that you have to quit eating pork. <laughs> then maybe he'll come on in. <laughs> then maybe I'll tell him later. Yeah. Now, pick it up at, you know, you know, the baptism. That's about the putting away of the old man. Pick it up at, uh, at, at uh, this is Paul here, and he's talking to the Gentiles, mind you. Uh, start reading at 4 and 17. Go ahead and read. 
This I say, therefore, uh -huh. and testify in the Lord, mm -hmm. that ye henceforth not walk as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind. See what it, now Paul is saying to these Gentiles here, this I say, thou therefore, that you don't walk as other Gentiles walk, even in the vanity of their own mind. You know what people get caught up in? You know, they're going to serve God according to the vanity of their own mind. I'm going to do it this way. The well, well, Jesus said in a way other than the commandments, he said you're doing it all in vain then, didn't he? So when you do it according uh, to the uh, commandments of men, then you're doing it all in vain. So now he said, he's saying to these Gentiles, don't walk as other Gentiles walk, even in the vanity of their own mind. Go ahead, continue uh, read. 18, uh -huh. having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that he is in them uh -huh. because of the blindness of their heart. See what it say, having the understanding darkness and being alienated, that's separated yes, sir. from the life of God according to the ignorance that is within them because of the blindness of their heart, meaning the blindness of their mind. Go ahead, continue reading who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness uh -huh. to work all uncleanness with greediness. Go ahead. But ye have not so learned Christ. But now he's saying to these ones that he's talking here, he said, but you have not so learned Christ. Go ahead, continue to read. If so be that ye have heard him. Now, and if so be that you have really heard him. Go ahead and read. If so be that ye have heard him uh -huh. and have been taught by him Go ahead. as the truth is in Jesus, Go ahead. that ye put off concerning the form of conversation, the old man. Now, notice what he said, that you put off. He's going to tell you what this old man is that you put off here. He, wait a minute. What happened to all I got to do is don't eat things uh, offered up to idols. He told the Gentiles here, and don't eat things strangled. What happened to that? <laughs> now he's telling them here. He's, now, he, now he's giving it to them straight. Yeah. Ain't soft soaking nothing else. Right. This is how it is, buddy. Yeah. Now you're going to have to jump in line. Go ahead and read. Which he is corrupt uh -huh. according to the deceitful lust. Now he said that you put off concerning the former conversation. The former life of conversation and lifestyle. Right. The old man, which is corrupt according to deceitful lust. Go ahead, continue to read. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And be renewed in the spirit of mind. In other words, you got to have a change of mind. Your thinking got to be different. Your actions must be different. Go ahead, continue to read. And that you put on the new man, uh -huh. which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Which and put on the new man that after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. You know what true holiness is? True holiness means walking in God's commandment. That's what true holiness is. Every time God said that be ye holy for out of the Lord God, your God am holy, guess what he said? Don't do this. Be ye holy for out of the Lord your God am holy, do this. Every time he told you about being holy, he gave you some commandment to keep. That is true holiness. That stuff running around the church hollering and shouting, that ain't holiness. No, sir. True holiness means obeying God's commandment. That is what true holiness is. Go ahead, continue to read. Wherefore, putting away lying. Oh, uh, wait a minute. What happened to the, 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 don't offer up things strangled to idols? What happened to that? What, what happened with that? Reality. Now, he said, uh, 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 Wherefore, he said, put away lying. Go ahead, continue to read. Speak every man truth with his neighbor. Well, now speak every man truth with his neighbor. Go ahead, read on. For we are members one of another. For we are members one of another. Go ahead, continue to read. Be ye angry and sin not. Now he said, be ye angry and don't sin. Go ahead, continue to read. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Go ahead. Neither give place to the devil. Uh-huh. Let him that stole steal no more. Wait a minute, he can't steal? He can't, you got to put away the line? Yes, sir. You got to stop stealing? Mm -hmm. Go ahead, read. But rather, let him labor, working with his hands uh -huh. the thing which is good, Go ahead. that he may have to give to him that needeth. Now, that is good. You know, this is, this is the circumcision of the heart here now. You know, because you got to put away all of that stuff that's contrary to the laws of God. Put away the line and the stealing and he said uh, and be ye angry and sin not in other words don't break the commandments because that's what sin is let's go now to uh 
Let's go now to uh, 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 Romans chapter 5, and we're going to pick it up at verse 9. Because I got to show you some things in order for you to understand some other thing uh, that, uh, that, that is spoken of in the New Testament regarding circumcision. I need you to understand this so that when we get to that, you will understand that. Let's go now to uh, Romans 5 and pick it up at verse 9. Romans 5 and begin reading at verse 9. 5 and 9. 5 and 9. Okay, go ahead and read, brother. Much more then, uh -huh. being now justified by his blood, go ahead. we shall be saved from wrath through him. So now he said being justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Let's go over to uh, Romans chapter 3, and we're going to pick it up at verse 19. Justified. I didn't put it up here before, but just in case you forgot it, it means to be clear to guilt. That's what justified me. So now, it says you are justified or cleared of guilt by the blood of Jesus. That's what clears your guilt. Start reading at uh, Romans chapter 3 and pick it up at, at verse 19. Go ahead and read. Now, uh -huh. we know that what things soever the law said, uh -huh. it said to them who are under the law, Go ahead. that every mouth may be stopped uh -huh. and all the world may become guilty before God. If whatever the law said, it said to them that are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God, then who is under the law? All of the world is under the law. If all of the world is going to become guilty, then all of the world is under the law. So much for that thing about... You know, the Jews are under the law and the Gentiles are under grace. That ain't what this said. All of the world is under the law. Verse 20, go ahead and read. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in its sight. Well, ain't nothing wrong with this statement, but it is not telling you that you don't have to keep the law. When they read this, they read this to try and say, this means I ain't got to keep the law. No, that is not what that means. He said, therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. What justifies you? The blood of Jesus. Law don't justify you. Law declares you guilty. Blood of Jesus what clears your guilt. But look at the rest of this verse here. They don't even bother to read the second half of this verse. Go ahead, continue to read. For by the law uh -huh. is the knowledge of sin. By the law is the knowledge. They so busy trying to get around the law, they neglect to read the second half. Because they'll read the first half and they'll run with that. Uh, by, by the deeds of the law, no flesh is justified. Now, they grab that and run with it. <laughs> because they think it is saying to them that they don't have to keep the law. But if they only read the second half of the verse, it said, by the, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. If you don't have a law, you don't even know what sin is. Because sin is a transgression of the law. Nobody ever says none of this stuff. And that's even, you're a New Testament Christian, right? Well, that's in the New Testament. Why you don't read that? You can't find it. I know you can't find it. You know why you can't find it? Because you ain't looking for it. You're looking for something that you can use to get around. That's all you're looking for. You ain't looking for nothing else. Paul said in one chapter uh, uh, something about the law. Then he turned around in the very next chapter and said the law is holy and it is just. And it is good. I ain't never heard him. Read. I've been I've been listening to him for a whole lot of years, but I ain't never heard him read that. You mean, man, in forty years you can't find that forty years, man? Are you trying? Apparently, you're not. It's like forty years you've been a preacher, but you ain't found the second chapter of Genesis yet, where it said the seventh day is the Sabbath day. 40 years you've been a preacher, man. <laughs> Apparently, somebody's fooling somebody. Sure. And you going with it, too, because they're telling you what they want. Because you like to get them ears tickled. Right. I can't go there. Mm -mm. They got too many do's and don'ts, and we ain't got no do's and don'ts. God got do's and don'ts. That's who got it. And we just tell you what they are. They want to serve a God that ain't got no rules. Just do whatever. Show up with your tithes 
And open your mouth and say, I believe. That's it. Nothing else. You don't need nothing else. See how far that's going to take you. I can tell you right now where it's going to take you. It's going to take you to a place that you don't want to be. Get, remember, you heard it here. Start reading at Romans chapter uh, 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 3 and 23 now. Verse 23. Go ahead and read. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. See what I say? Everybody is guilty. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Go ahead and read on. Being justified freely by his grace uh -huh. through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Well, you read in chapter 5, verse 9, that you're justified by his blood, didn't you? Yes, sir. And now you read that you're justified by his grace. Well, what is his grace? His grace is his blood. Because a free gift, you didn't earn it. You, you, me, nobody else did not earn Jesus coming and dying for their sin. They did not. That was grace, people. Amen. That is the grace that he came with. What verse are we? Starting 25. Go ahead and read. Whom God hath set forth to be a propitiation through faith mm -hmm. in his blood Go ahead. to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. Go ahead. Just skip down. Well, skip down to verse 29. Go ahead and read. Is he the God of the Jews only? Uh-huh. Is he not also of the Gentiles? Now you say, is he the God of the Jews only? Is he not also of the Gentiles? Go ahead and read on. Yes, of the Gentiles also. Yes, of the Gentiles also. Now, what he's letting you know here is, you know, uh, uh, you, what, what applies to the Jews, it applies to the Gentiles as well. This is what he's telling you here. Pay attention. He's not separating them. He's not telling you the Jews, they got to do this, and the Gentiles, they have to do that. He's telling you this applies to everybody. It takes the blood of Jesus to clear the Gentiles of guilt. It takes the blood of Jesus to clear the Jews of guilt as well. Go ahead, continue to read. Seeing it is one God uh -huh. which shall justify the circumcision by faith. Well, who is the circumcision? That is the Jews. Go ahead, continue to read. And uncircumcision through faith. And who is the uncircumcision? That is the Gentile. And they're all justified by faith in the blood of Jesus. Go ahead, continue to read. Do we then make void the law through faith? Now, do we cancel out the law? Do away with it through faith? Who is he talking about here? Is he just talking about the Jews or is he talking about the Gentiles as well? He's talking about everybody, isn't it? He said Jews, and did he say them both? Yes, sir. So now, he said, do we then make void the law through faith? Listen to the answer. Go ahead and read. God forbid. No, in other words. Go ahead and read. Yeah, we established the law. Yeah, we established the law. So he letting you know right here that the Jews, they got to keep the law, and the Gentiles, they got to keep the law as well. The Jews, once they repent and get baptized in the name of Jesus, they are in the grace. Gentiles, once they repent and get baptized in the name of Jesus, they too are under grace. And until you do that, you're not under grace. And if you don't obey the law, you ain't got no salvation coming. Do whatever you want to do with it. Take it however you want to take it. Let's go now to Galatians chapter 2, and we'll pick it up at verse 16. Galatians chapter 2, and we'll begin at verse 16. Because we got to clear up some things here. We got to clear up some things that were said about the circumcision because people try to make it as if, you know, if you're a Gentile, you don't have to get circumcised, and they want to go and read a few verses here and there, especially in the writings of Paul. That's why I done went through this thing here to let you know what it is that justifies you. Circumcision don't justify you. Ten Commandments don't justify you. High days don't justify you. The blood of Jesus, that's what justifies you. Start reading now at uh, uh, Galatians chapter 2 and pick it up at verse 16. Galatians 2 and began reading at verse 16. You know, now and then we need to deal with the rights of Paul. Everybody else, they call themselves dealing with it. They have the base of Paul right here and they have one there. And the ones that they have are the ones that they think that he is telling them that they don't have to keep the law. Because they have gone so far as to say, we don't need to hear, listen to nobody but Paul. Mm. They call it the dispensation of Paul. You know what the dispensation of Paul is? 
is that he minister the same gospel that Jesus had, the same gospel that the 12 had, but that he ministered unto the Gentiles. That was his dispensation. He told you that in Ephesians chapter 3. Start reading here in Galatians chapter 2 and pick it up at verse 16. Go ahead and read. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by faith in Jesus Christ. Well, we've been reading that all along then, haven't we? So ain't nothing wrong with this statement, but they like this verse here because they think it's saying that they don't have to keep the law. So, but he says, uh, uh, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by faith in Christ Jesus. Go ahead, continue to read. Even we have believed, even we have believed in Jesus Christ, uh -huh. that we might be justified by the faith of Christ Wait. and not by the works of the law. Uh -huh. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. No, and, and that's true. By the works of the law, no flesh will be justified. Go ahead, continue to read. But if, while we seek to be justified by Christ, uh -huh. we ourselves also are found sinners, Go ahead. is therefore Christ the minister of sin? God forbid. Go ahead, read. For if I build again the things which I destroy, uh -huh. I make myself a transgressor. Go ahead. For I, through the law, am dead to the law, uh -huh. that I might live unto God. I am crucified with Christ. Go ahead. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. Uh -huh. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith of the Son of God, who loved me and Go gave ahead. himself for me. Uh -huh. I do not frustrate the grace of God, uh -huh. for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. So now he said, if righteousness come by the law, then Christ died all in vain, but righteousness don't come by the law. He's dealing with being justified here. You're not justified by the law. You're justified by the blood of Jesus. And that is the point that he's making here. You know, I, put, I said all of that to get over here. Let's go, uh, uh, let, let, let's go first to uh, Philippians. We'll get there in, in a minute. But first, let's go to Philippians chapter 3. And we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Chapter 3, and we'll pick it up at verse 1. 3 and 1. Got to take you this way. I want you to see a little thing here. How Israel always Paul followed Paul around, you know, uh, trying to, uh, you, you, uh, you know, push being circumcised in the flesh, you know, and 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 that was sufficient in itself. Let's go to uh, 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 Philippians chapter uh, 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 three and begin reading at verse one, three and one. I'm just trying to help you understand some things here that uh, the book says about being circumcised so you don't allow people to take these things and mislead you with them. Start, because there, there are things that's, the way Paul often phrased things, he, yeah, I kind of wish he didn't, but it is what it is, and, and you just have to deal with it, but you need to understand it so you don't allow yourself to get misled by these things. That's why I Amen. go through some of these things some of the time. For your benefit. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, so maybe you can explain it to somebody else, but if not, maybe you can understand it for yourself so you don't allow anybody to uh, mislead you. Start reading at uh, Philippians 3 and pick it up at verse 1. Go ahead and read. Finally, my brethren, mm -hmm. rejoice in the Lord to write the same things un uh, to you. Uh -huh. To me, indeed, is not grievous, but for you, it is safe. Now he said, now he said, finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. He said, to write these same things unto you. To you, indeed, uh, uh, to me, he said, indeed, it is not grievous. It is not hard, he's saying for me. But for you, it is safe for you. I'm going to tell you some stuff here because he's, he's talking about these Israelites that was always following him around, glory in the flesh and not really giving you the thing the way that you really need to hear it. Notice what he says here. Go ahead and read. Beware of dogs. They said, beware of dogs. Go ahead and read on. Beware of evil workers. Beware of evil workers. Read. Beware of the, con of the concision. You know who the concision is? That is Israel. That's who the concision is. He said, beware. Go ahead, continue to read. For we are the circumcision, uh -huh. which worship God in the spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus uh -huh. and have no confidence in the flesh. See, they, they, you know, they, they was always kicking the flesh. Uh, I've been circumcised in the flesh, see. 
You ain't been circumcised in the flesh, Jew. You uncircumcised. I've been circumcised in the flesh, see. But Paul is saying, and he's going to tell you, I've been circumcised in the flesh too, man. I was circumcised on the eighth day. But he said, but he's saying here, for we are, we are the circumcision which worship God in spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. Because whatever I am in the flesh, however, however long I got circumcised in the flesh, if I ain't obeying the law, if I have not been circumcised in the heart, my circumcision is vain. So, so, so he, he said, I ain't one of them ones that's running around boasting about the flesh. He said, however I could, because I was circumcised the eighth day. Go ahead, continue to read. Though I might also have confidence in the flesh. He said, though I also might have confidence. You boast in the flesh. I can boast too. I got circumcised the eighth day, but I ain't boasting about that. My, my confidence is in the circumcision, uh, because we worship God in the spirit, and we and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. Go ahead, continue reading. If any other man thinketh that he hath whereof he might trust in the flesh, uh -huh. I more. Now he said, if any man think that he might trust in the flesh, he said, I more. Go ahead, continue reading. Circumcised the eighth day. He said, I was circumcised on the eighth day, man. You, most of us can't say that. All of us may have been circumcised, but I doubt if it was in it unless some of these real young ones that was brought up in the word that can say that I was circumcised on the eighth day. Go ahead, continue to read. Circumcised the eighth day uh -huh. of the stock of Israel, uh -huh. of the tribe of Benjamin. And you can't say that either. You know you Israel because the condition that the Lord uh, pronounced upon Israel applies to you. That's how you know you Israel. But he said, I'm more. I was circumcised on the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin. But he said, I ain't glorying in the flesh. I glory in the spirit. One that's been circumcised in the heart and not in the flesh. Circumcised really in both. Both in the, in the, in the, in the flesh and in the heart. Go ahead, continue reading. And Hebrew of the Hebrews uh -huh. as touching the law. Now he said, Hebrew of the Hebrews as touching the law. Go ahead, continue reading. As touching the law. A Pharisee. So now, you know, this, this is what Paul had to contend with all of the time. You know, these Israelites running around boasting in the flesh. I've been circumcised in the flesh. You ain't been circumcised in the flesh. I'm circumcised. You ain't circumcised. That's what he always had to deal with. So he just letting them know, man, that's circumcision you're talking about. It's circumcision, but it ain't nothing to be boasting about. I boast in the spirit. That's what I boast in. Boast in being circumcised in the heart. Let's go now to, uh, let's go now. Now we can better understand what we are about to read here. Galatians chapter 5. Pick it up at verse 1. Galatians 5. And we'll pick it up at verse 1. I want you to keep in mind what I put on this board up here. There was a reason that I did this. As I always said, there's always a method to my madness. And there was a reason that I got these little simple words up here, uh, justified, clear the guilt. What clears your guilt? The blood of Jesus, that is it. Law don't clear you a guilt. The dietary law, the Ten Commandments, the high day law, none of that clears your guilt. You know what clears your guilt? The blood of Jesus. Guess what else don't clear your guilt? Circumcision don't clear your guilt either. You know what clears your guilt? The blood of Jesus. Now he's going to deal with uh, uh, some a little bit about the circumcision here, and he's going to deal with being justified. Start reading at uh, Galatians chapter 5 and pick it up at verse 1, 5 and 1. Go ahead and read, bro. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free. Go ahead. And be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Now he said, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty uh, wherefore Christ has made us free, and do not get entangled again in the yoke of bond. You know, Jesus made us free because he came and died for us. So now, but if you go back and start doing all of the stuff that got you in trouble in the first place, now you have got entangled again in the yoke of bondage. Go ahead, continue to read. Behold, I, Paul, say unto you uh -huh. that ye be circumcised. Christ shall profit, that if ye be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. Now they like this. 
because they thinking that this is saying that uh, you you know Christ can't prophesy. You know, well, well, Paul said he was circumcised the eighth day, right? Yeah. Well, is, is he saying that Christ can't prophesy him nothing? Is that what he's saying? He's dealing with being justified here. And as we continue to read, you're going to see that. But he said, uh, uh, Behold, I, Paul, uh, uh, say unto you, If ye be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. He's not saying that Christ ain't going to profit him nothing. He said he was circumcised, didn't he? Right. But I'm going to show you what he's saying here is that you cannot be justified by this circumcision. That is what he's saying. He's going to tell you. Keep reading. Go ahead and read. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised Go ahead. that he is a debtor to the whole law. Now he said, I, I, I testify that every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to the whole law. Because if you think that you can be justified by circumcision, then you are indebted to do the whole law. You can't mess up one time. If you mess up one time, it's fire for you. But he's going to let you know here, what he's really telling you here is, is that you're not justified by this circumcision. What justifies you? The blood of Jesus. That's why I put it up there, so you wouldn't forget it. Amen. If, if your man started to whine and look on the board. <laughs> Go ahead and read. Christ has become of no effect huh? of no effect unto you. Go ahead. Whosoever of you are justified by the law. Christ has become no effect of you. Whosoever is justified by the law. You're not justified by the law. You're not justified by circumcision. You're justified by the blood of Jesus. That's what you did. That's what he was dealing with here. When he, when he made the statement, he said, Behold, I say unto you that if ye be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing at all. Because he was circumcised, so if that's, if, if, if that's what he is saying, then, then he's saying that uh, Christ ain't of none effect unto him. And you know that ain't what he's saying. But he's letting them know here that, uh, uh, he, you know, if you think you're going to be justified by it, then Christ is of none effect unto you. Pay attention to what you read. See, that's why I put all this stuff on the board. Where, so when we got here, you would understand what he is dealing with here. Go ahead, read a little bit more. Ye are fallen from grace. Go ahead. For we through the Spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. Mm -hmm. For in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth anything Go ahead. nor uncircumcision, uh -huh. but faith which worketh by love. Now, circumcision don't justify you. Uncircumcision uh, don't justify you. But faith, but faith in what? But faith in the blood of Jesus, that's what justifies you. And that is the point that he's making here to these people. Let's go now to, uh, let's go now to, uh, well, let's go to Galatians chapter 6, and we'll pick it up at verse 11. You said, Brother Daniel, you're going off a long time. Yes. <laughs> Galatians chapter 6. And pick it up at verse 11. Because you need to understand about this. Because they all got it messed up. Because all you got to do is bring up the thing circumcision. And they, for the first thing, they're going to run over into Acts chapter 15. And where they had the big argument about whether or not the Gentile needs to be circumcised. And they're going to try to use it to make it be everybody. But you know, even though they decided in themselves for a while that they really didn't need to do. But you see, they backed off of that in a hurry, didn't they? Because Paul turned right around and circumcised a Gentile Timothy, didn't he? Yes, sir. Then he turned around and he says, circumcision is good if you keep the law. Yes, Say Paul now. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Start reading at uh, 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 Galatians chapter 6 and pick it up at verse 11. You know, Peter didn't say in vain that uh, the writings of Paul is hard to be understood, and they that are unlearned in the Scripture, they were twisted as they would other Scripture, but to their own destruction. You are dealing with unlearned people. You, the, the last thing in the world I want teaching me is some unlearned person. Okay. You ain't even got little bitty stuff right now. Why would I listen to you? And you, are, you can't even get three days and three nights right, and I'm going to listen to you. Telling me 
that my good old Christian nun went to heaven and I saw her laying in the box. And then I saw him take them out there and put her in the ground. I saw that. Okay. And I'm going to listen to you. And I got all this Bible that tell me what happened with the dead. You put them in the ground, they go back to the dirt. I got the Bible and I got the evidence. Now, what am I listening to you for? You unlearned. And that's what Peter was saying to the people. Those people that are unlearned in the word of God, they're going to twist Paul's writing even as they would other scripture, but to their own destruction. If I'm going to listen to somebody, I, I'm going to listen to somebody that I know is learned. How long you been reading the Bible? But, uh, well, you know, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't never read, read the Bible. I, I've been going to church all my life. <laughs> hey, what else? How long you been reading the Bible, man? That's what I need to know. Well, you know, all my life I've been going to church. Hey, you are learning. Yes, sir. So why would I listen to you? What I'm gonna let you teach me for? Think about it. Start reading at Galatians chapter six and pick it up at verse eleven. Six and eleven. Go ahead and read. You see how large a letter I have written unto you with mine own hand. Now, this same letter, you know, Galatians, these are letters. And he was, you know, this book that we call Galatians, it is a letter uh, uh, that he wrote uh, to the uh, uh, Galatians. And he was saying in, in, in uh, what we call chapter 5 here that how uh, that, uh, you know, you can't be justified by circumcision. And, 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 and so now this is a part of the same letter. And, 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 and uh, you know, I, I read that stuff about how he warned people to beware of the concision that, uh, uh, that, that was glorying in the flesh and not in the spirit. That's why I read you that stuff. Because here you have the same issue here, and he's going to just let them know hear about these people that's running around that's glowing in the flesh and not in the spirit, glowing about the circumcision in the flesh and, and having nothing about the circumcision of the heart, putting away the evil and the wickedness thereof. Go ahead, read. As many as desire to make a fair show in the flesh. Uh -huh. they say, as many as desire to make a fair show in the flesh. I've, I've, I've been around them ever since I've been in the world. That's all they tell. I'm Israel. I'm circumcised. I'm Israel. I'm I remind them sometimes. Israel that was circumcised came out of Egypt and got killed in the wilderness too, didn't they? Mm -hmm. Oh, well. <laughs> now what? That's how you have to deal with these people. That's the same issue that Paul had. You got the same message that they have, and when you got the same message that they have, you're going to have to deal with the same issues. That's why I don't get it. Why are you afraid of being persecuted for the word of God? They got persecuted. Yes, sir. Prophets got persecuted. The master himself got prosecuted. Why ain't they going to persecute you? Jesus even said, if they call the, the master bears above, which means chief devils, what you think they're going to call you? Right. <laughs> you ought to, you, they call the master the chief devil. Wow. Yeah. And you scared they're going to call you for something. <laughs> well, you know. oh, oh, Bob there, you know, he, uh, uh, you know, he just got off in that cult. All they do is read the Bible. <laughs> talk, talk about doing right. <laughs> Following the commandments and all that old stuff. Wow. And I don't see them go the other way because of it. Because they can't take it. But, you know, the, the very issues that we deal with today are the very issues that they dealt with back then. Go ahead and read. 12. Uh-huh. As many as desire to make a fair show in the flesh. See what it said? That as many, he's saying to these, uh, these Gentiles, that as many as desire to make a fair show in the flesh. Go ahead, continue to read. They constrain you to be circumcised. Uh, he said they constrain you. 
uh, to be circumcised, which they do need to be circumcised. But all they doing is a, it's all about the flesh thing with them. So he said they can strain. But notice what else he says here. Go ahead and read on. Only lest they should suffer persecution Go ahead. for the cross of Christ. Read. For neither they themselves who are circumcised keep the law. Oh, oh, there, there you have it now. See, that's the issue. Neither, they, they circumcised all right, but they don't keep no law. And that was the thing that you were supposed to do. That was what the Lord said, even by the mouth of Moses. You know, he got to be, he talked about being circumcised in the heart, but then he turned around and said, you know, obey his commandments and his statutes and his judgments. <laughs> so to be circumcised in the flesh ain't good enough, people. You need it. Why do I say you need it? Because God said you need it. That's why I said you need it. Whether you Israel or whether you strength, argue with him about it. You know, uh, uh, when the apostles got together, they was reasoning within themselves that we don't lay no greater burden on these people that is necessary. But as you see, they started to back up off that stuff, didn't they? Because he said that they uh, 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 don't eat things strangled uh, a, th uh, uh, a meat offered up to idol. But then found out later on, he said to the Gentile, you know, you can't steal, man. You can't lie. You can't fornicate. So much for that thing strangled and, and, and meat offered up to blood. Keep reading. Go ahead and read it, brother. But desire to have you circumcised that they may glory in your flesh. See what I said? But they desire to have you circumcised that they may glory in your flesh. Because this is all about a flesh thing with them. Mm -hmm. If they ain't keeping the law, if they ain't keeping the law, then they ain't been, they ain't been circumcised in the heart, they ain't had it. No, sir. Because he just said, you know, they glory in the flesh. But they ain't keeping no law. That meant they ain't been circumcised in the heart. You know, they just been circumcised in the flesh, and they're glorying in that. But you got to be circumcised in the flesh, and you got to be circumcised in the heart, and we're going to get to that in just a minute. But go ahead and read, brother. But God forbid uh -huh. that I should glory, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, go ahead. by whom the world is crucified unto me, mm -hmm. and I unto the world. You say, I, he said, I glory, uh, 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 in the cross of Jesus Christ. He said uh, that the world had been crucified unto me and I unto them. Go ahead, continue to read. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision availeth anything, uh -huh. nor uncircumcision, but a new creature. Look, and, but in itself, circumcision availeth nothing. But he said earlier, you know, circumcision is good if you keep the law, right? right. But he said in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision availeth anything, or uncircumcision, but what? A new creature. You know what a new creature is? One that's been circumcised in the heart, people. That's a new creature. Now, uh, uh, boy, y'all sitting there looking at me like. I ain't got nowhere to go, brother. Yeah. No okay, well, let's do it. Genesis chapter 12. We're going to pick it up at verse 1. 12 and 1. Don't do this all the time, y'all, just now and then. Genesis chapter 12, pick it up at uh, verse 1, 12 and 1, 12 and 1. I'm going to show you something here in a little bit about the seed of Abraham. You ain't got a whole long time. Just be patient. I'm helping you out anyway. Teaching yes, sir. you. And, and, and maybe keeping you from polluting the Sabbath. Yes, sir. Let you out here too early. You be... No telling where. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 12, pick it up at verse 1. Go ahead and read. Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country mm -hmm. and from thy kindred Go ahead. and from thy father's house uh -huh. unto a land that I will show thee. Go ahead. And I will make of thee a great nation uh -huh. and I will bless thee Go and ahead. make thy name great uh -huh. and thou shalt be a blessing. Go ahead. And I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curseth thee. Go ahead. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Now he made this uh, promise with Abraham that in Abraham would all families of the earth be blessed. Let's go over to uh, 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 let's go to Genesis chapter 22, and we'll pick it up at verse 15. Genesis 22, and we'll begin reading at uh, verse 
15, 22 and 15, 22 and 15. Okay, go ahead and read. This and too was a part of the promise that God made with Abraham. He said to Abraham first, you know, and you, Abraham, will all nations, uh, all families of the earth be blessed. Then he added this as well. Verse 15, go ahead and read. And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham uh -huh. out of the heavens a second time. Go ahead. And said, uh -huh. by myself have I sworn, saith the Lord, uh -huh. for because thou hast done this thing uh -huh. and hast not withheld thy son, go ahead. thine only son. Now he said, Abraham, because you have not withheld your son, your only son. Go ahead and read. That in blessing I will bless thee, uh -huh. and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven. Now he said, Abraham, in blessing I'm going to bless you. Multiplying, I'm going to multiply your seed as the stars of heaven. Go ahead, read. And as the sand of which he is upon the seashore. Go ahead, read. And thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. Uh -huh. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Now he said, Abraham, and in your seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. First he said to Abraham, uh, and you, Abraham, will all the families of the earth be blessed. Then he turns around and says to Abraham, in your seed, Abraham, shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Remember what he said to Abraham. Abraham, you and your natural seed all must be circumcised. Mm -hmm. Then he turned around and said, a stranger, Abraham, that will sojourn among you, they too must be circumcised. And if they are not circumcised, then they will be, they have broken the covenant and they will be cut off from my people. Let's start reading here at John chapter 8 and we'll pick it up at verse 35. John 8, and we'll begin reading at verse 35. 8 and 35 here. So I'm going to show you a little thing here about the seed of Abraham. Okay. So, you know, when we started this lesson out, and we read about the seed of Abraham, and I told you then, you know, this had to do part natural, but it had to do with uh, part spiritual as well, because this was more than just Abraham's natural seed, that is it, because if you notice, he threw in the stranger, didn't he? Yeah. He said, just like Abraham, natural seed need to be circumcised, stranger need to be circumcised as well. If they was not, they would be cut off from his people. They have broken the covenant. Start reading at uh, 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 John chapter 8 and pick it up at uh, verse 35. John 8 and verse 35. Okay, go ahead and read, brother. And the servant abideth not in the house forever, uh -huh. but the son abideth forever. Go ahead, read. If the son therefore shall make you free, uh -huh. ye shall be free indeed. Go ahead, read. I know that ye are Abraham's seed, uh -huh. but ye seek to kill me, Go ahead. because my word hath no place in you. Now he's talking to Israel. Who they, that's who he's talking to here. And I guarantee you they were circumcised. Yeah, I bet you every one of them was circumcised. Because he was a Pharisee that he was dealing with here, and they didn't play that. So now, he's saying, uh, uh, he said, now, uh, I know that you be Abraham's seed, but ye seek to kill me, and the reason you want to kill me is because my word have no place in you. Go ahead, continue to read. I speak that which I have seen with my father. Go ahead. And ye do that which ye have seen with your father. Now, he said, I speak the things that I have seen with my father, and, and you do the things which you have seen with your father. Wait, he just told me Abraham's seed. Didn't he just say that? Go ahead, read on. They answered and said unto him, uh -huh. Abraham is our father. Go ahead. Jesus said unto them, uh -huh. If ye were Abraham's children, ye would do the works of Abraham. Well, he just told them they were Abraham's children, didn't he? Now he turns around and tells them, If you were Abraham's children, then you would do the works of Abraham. They were Abraham's children in the flesh. Jesus said that. But guess what? They was not Abraham's children in the spirit. But they were, but he's going to tell them who their daddy is in the spirit. Go ahead, continue to read. But now ye seek to kill me. He said, now, if you were Abraham's children, then you would do the uh, works of Abraham. But now ye seek to kill me, which Abraham never did. Go ahead, continue to read. A man that hath told you the truth. He's all I've done is told you the truth, and they want to kill him. Guess what? They wouldn't mind taking you out either if they felt they could get away from him. You stand up there with that Bible in your hand long enough in front of him. And you see some teeth starting to grind. Yes, sir. And, yes, sir. and some hard looks. And mm. they really would like to do something to you. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. 
which I have heard of God, uh -huh. this did not Abraham. Go ahead, read. Ye do the deeds of your father. Uh -huh. Then said they to him, we be not born of fornication. Uh -huh. We have one father, even God. Go ahead, read. Jesus said unto them, uh -huh. if God were your father, ye you would love me. Go ahead. For I proceed forth and came from God. Uh -huh. Neither came I of myself, Go but ahead. he sent me. Read it. Why do ye not understand my speech? Uh -huh. Even because ye cannot hear my word. Go ahead, read. Ye are of your father the devil, uh -huh. and the lust of your father ye will do. He said they, wait, first he said they were Abraham's seed, didn't he? Right. Now he turns around and says, you really are your father the devil. Because if you were really Abraham's seed, then you would do the works of Abraham. Go ahead, finish that verse. He was a murderer from the beginning. He said, now you are of your father the devil, and he was a murderer from the beginning. Go ahead, continue reading. And abode not in the truth, uh -huh. because there is no truth in him. Go ahead, read. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. So now, well, let's go over to uh, Galatians, and we'll pick it up at verse 6. We're almost there. You got three more after this one, and then you're out of here. Galatians chapter 3, and we'll pick it up at verse 6. Galatians 3, and we'll begin reading at verse 6. You know, first Jesus said to these Jews, uh, 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 I know you be Abraham's seed. Then he turns around and said, but you really owe your father the devil. And I'm going to show you who Abraham's real seed is. Abraham's real seed are those that do the works of Abraham. That's who Abraham's real seed is. And that's really who the covenant is with. God don't care nothing about you being Israel in the flesh. That don't mean absolutely nothing. If Israel in the flesh had been enough, then he would not have killed them there in the wilderness. All he had to say was, well, you know, I'm, 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 I'm Abraham's seed. Oh, okay. You, you saved then because you're Abraham's seed. But he killed every one of them right there in the That's wilderness, right. didn't he? That's right. Start reading at uh, Galatians chapter 3 and pick it up at uh, verse 6. Galatians 3 and verse 6. Go ahead and read even as Abraham believed God, uh -huh. and it was counted to him for righteousness. Go ahead. Know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. See what Abraham's real children are? It is those that are of faith, those that believe and follow the word of God. That's who's Abraham's real children. Because Jesus said, I know you be Abraham seed. Then he turned around and said, but you really are your father the devil. Because you was Abraham seed, then you would do the works of Abraham. So now, he said, uh, uh, Know ye therefore that they which are of Abraham, uh, they, they, uh, they which are of faith the same are the children of Abraham. Go ahead, continue reading. And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the, he justify the heathen uh -huh. through faith, Go ahead. preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, uh -huh. In thee shall all nations be blessed. Now, we read, uh, all, that, we read all this uh, back in uh, Genesis. Go ahead, continue reading. So then they which be of faith uh -huh. are blessed with faithful Abraham. Now he said, those that be of faith, they are the one that is blessed with favor, uh, faithful Abraham. Those that believe, those that be of faith, those are the real seed of Abraham. Those are the ones that will be blessed with faithful Abraham. Go ahead, continue reading. For as many as are of the works of the law uh -huh. are under the curse. Go ahead. For it is written, Curses every one that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. Go ahead, read. But no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. Uh -huh. It is evident, for the just shall live by faith. You know, it keeps saying that you ain't justified by law. I don't care what law it is, you ain't justified by it. You're justified by the blood of Jesus. Not justified by circumcision, you're only justified by the blood of Jesus. Go ahead, continue reading. And the law is not of faith, uh -huh. but the man that doeth them shall live in them. Go ahead and read. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law. What was the curse of the law? The curse of the law was death. How did Jesus redeem us from that curse? He redeemed us because he died for us. That is how he redeemed us from the curse of the law. Go ahead, continue reading. Being made a curse for us. Go ahead and read. For it is written, cursed is every one that hangeth on a tree. Go ahead and read. That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles. Now, Jesus was hung on a tree, and he was cursed, but he was not cursed for something that he did. He was cursed for what man had done. 
Because it is written, curse is everyone that hang upon a tree. Go ahead, continue reading. Through Jesus Christ. Go ahead. That we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Go ahead. Brethren, I speak after the manner of men. Uh -huh. Though it be but a man's covenant, yet if it be confirmed, no man disannulleth or addeth thereto. And it has been confirmed. Jesus came to confirm it. Therefore, no man can disannul it or any man can add anything to it. Go ahead, continue reading. Now, to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. Now he said to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. Go ahead, continue reading. He saith not, and to seeds as of many. And he didn't say seed as of many, but he said a seed as of one. Go ahead, continue reading. But as of one, uh -huh. and to thy seed, which is Christ. And to thy seed, which is Christ. Now I'm going to show you the seed that will be blessed with faithful Abraham, skip down to uh, verse 24. Go ahead and read. Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ. Now, you know what this schoolmaster is? This law that was the schoolmaster, that was the animal sacrifice law, and it was good until Jesus came and died. Go ahead, continue to read. That we might be justified by faith. That we might be justified by faith. By faith in what? By faith in the blood of Jesus. Go ahead, continue to read. But after that faith has come, uh -huh. we are no longer under a schoolmaster. Well, you ain't under that schoolmaster anymore, people. You ain't under that sacrificial law anymore. Mm -hmm. That ended when Jesus came and died. But now he's going to tell you who that seed of Abraham that will be blessed with Abraham. Go ahead, continue to read. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. See what they say? Ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. In other words, if you believe and you show that by what you do, then you are a child of God, then you are a child of Abraham, and then you will be blessed with faith for Abraham. I don't care if you Jew, Gentile, do not matter. What matters is whether or not you believe. That's what matters. Go ahead, continue reading. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ uh -huh. have put on Christ. Go ahead, read. There is neither Jew nor Greek. Yeah, there is still Jew. He ain't talking flesh here. No, you are what you are. Mm -hmm. I'm a Jew. I'm going to be that. You're a Gentile. You're going to be that. But that ain't what God concerned with. He concerned with whether or not you believe, and if you believe, then you become a seed of Abraham, and you will be blessed with faithful Abraham. Go ahead, continue read. There is neither bond nor free. And you know there's bond and there's free. Go ahead, continue read. There is neither male nor female. And certainly you know that they are male and they are females. Go ahead, continue read. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. So see what he said, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. Go ahead, continue read. And if ye be Christ. And then if you belong to Christ, go ahead and read on. Then are ye Abraham's seed uh -huh. and heirs according to the promise. Then are ye Abraham's seed, and then you become an heir according to the promise. But you got to do everything that he said for faithful Abraham to do. That included the circumcision, didn't it? That's why the Lord kind of threw it in there. Abraham, your seed, and the stranger that is not of thy seed. Because if you really Abraham see, then you're going to do the works of Abraham. And then you will be blessed with faithful Abraham. We got three other scriptures here. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 52. We're going to read just one verse. Isaiah 52. And we're going to read just one verse. 52 and 1. 52 and 1. Okay, go ahead and read, brother. Awake, awake, put on thy strength, O Zion. Now he said, awake, awake, put on thy strength, O Zion. Go ahead and read on. Put on thy beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, go ahead. the holy city. Uh -huh. For henceforth there shall no more come in to thee the uncircumcised and the unclean. He said, for henceforth, this is talking future. He said, for henceforth there shall no more come in thee the uncircumcised and the unclean. This is when the Lord returned here. Let's go now. Jeremiah chapter 9, and we're going to pick it up at verse 25. Jeremiah 9, and we'll begin reading at verse 25. 9 and 25 here. Because you're going to have to get it. You're going to have to get it. You're going to have to be circumcised in the flesh, and you're going to have to be circumcised in the heart. That if you're a male 
And if you're a female, you got to be circumcised in the heart. Because if you're not circumcised in the heart, then you ain't going to come near the Lord. Let's go now to... Uh, 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 uh. Now let's go now to uh, 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 Jeremiah 9 and begin reading at verse 25. Go ahead and read. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, uh -huh. that I will punish all them which are circumcised with the uncircumcised. See, see what the Lord said, the day is going to come that I'm going to punish all them that are circumcised even with the uncircumcised. So some of the circumcised are going to get punished as well as the uncircumcised. But what are you going to punish the circumcised for? Well, he's going to tell you what he's going to punish them for. Go ahead, continue to read. Egypt and Judah. Now he said Egypt and Judah. Go ahead and read on. And Edom. And Edom, read. And the children of Ammon. And the children of Ammon. Go ahead and read. And Moab. Uh -huh. And all that are in the utmost corners that dwell in the wilderness. Go ahead. For all these nations are uncircumcised, and all the house of Israel are uncircumcised in heart. See, but in so the all hearts. these nations are uncircumcised, and the house of Israel is uncircumcised in the heart. So most of you are boasting about being circumcised in the flesh. And that was the message that Paul kept trying to get to them, but it didn't, it didn't seem to ever register. Let's go. Come and show you a thing, even with the stranger. If they're not circumcised in the heart and in the flesh, they will not come now to the Lord. Let's go to Ezekiel chapter 44, and we're going to pick it up at verse 6. Ezekiel 44, and we'll begin reading. Uh, in verse 6. Now, this is after the Lord returned, after he had set up in Jerusalem, mm -hmm. after he had established the kingdom on this earth. This is what, uh, uh, look at what the Lord says here, 44, and pick it up at verse 6, 44 and 6. Go ahead and read. And thou shalt say to the rebellious, even to the house of Israel. Now, he said, you said to the rebellious, and you say it even to the house of Israel. Go ahead, continue to read. Thus saith the Lord God. Thus saith the Lord God. Go ahead, read on. O ye house of Israel, uh -huh. let it suffice you of all your abominations. Go ahead, and read. In that ye have brought into my sanctuary strangers, uncircumcised in heart and uncircumcised in flesh. Well, you know, Israel, they did that because, you know, they were supposed to have been the priests of God and they were supposed to do all of the things and teach all of the people the way that God had, had, had said everything should be done and everything should be taught. But now he said, you have brought in my sanctuary strangers, uncircumcised in heart and uncircumcised in flesh. Go ahead and read on. To be in my sanctuary to pollute it. See what it said, to be in my sanctuary to pollute it. Go ahead, continue to read. Even my house, uh -huh. when ye offer my bread, Go ahead. the fat and the blood, Go ahead. they have broken my covenant uh -huh. because of all your abominations. See what they said? They done broke my covenant, Israel, because of all your abominations. You didn't do what you were supposed to do. Mm. And I gave the thing to you. You supposed to have been telling the people how things should uh, uh, go. But you done brought in my sanctuary of strangers, uncircumcised in heart and uncircumcised in flesh. Go ahead, continue to read. And ye have not kept the charge of my unholy things. See, well, and ye did not keep the charge of my holy things. Go ahead, continue to read. But ye have set keepers of my charge in my sanctuary for yourselves. Uh -huh. Thus saith the Lord God. Go ahead. No stranger, uncircumcised in heart, nor uncircumcised in flesh, shall enter into my sanctuary. Now you do whatever you want to do. This is when the Lord returns. He said, no stranger, uncircumcised in heart, or uh, uncircumcised in flesh shall enter into my sanctuary. So you can go with that thing about I'm a Gentile and I ain't got to get circumcised. And, and, and the thing with Israel is most of them think they Gentile. <laughs> well, before I'm going to conclude, they had to be circumcised. Off the, right off the bat, they had to be circumcised. Bam! You better you bet not even hesitate. And the, the issue came up with whether the strangers needed to be circumcised or not. Well, the Lord is saying it. This ain't the apostles saying, well, well, my conclusion is. This ain't them. This is the Lord saying, no stranger, uncircumcised in heart or uncircumcised in flesh, shall enter into my sanctuary. Go ahead, finish, finish it up. Uh, I, I, I took it away from you, but you, you pick it back up. Go yes, ahead. Yes, sir. It shall enter into my sanctuary. Start from the top. 
Thus saith the Lord God. Not thus said Ezekiel, or thus said Moses, or Paul, or Peter, or James, or any of the rest of them. Thus said the Lord, no stranger. Go ahead, continue reading. No stranger, mm -hmm. uncircumcised in heart, nor uncircumcised in flesh, shall enter into my sanctuary of any stranger that is among the children of Israel. Now, there you have it. Do whatever you want to do with it. You got to get the circumcision in the flesh. I don't care if you're Israel or if you're stranger. You got to get the circumcision in the heart. I don't care if you're Israel, stranger, male or female, does not matter. If you're going to enter into the Lord's sanctuary, you got to get it. Now you do what you want to do with it. Thank you for being with me all of this time. Our Father, our Father, which art in heaven, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. In earth. In earth. As it is in heaven. As it is in heaven. Give us this day. Give us this day. Our daily bread. Our daily bread. And forgive us our debts. And forgive us our debts. As we forgive our debtors. As we forgive our debtors. And lead us not. And lead us not. Into temptation. Into temptation. But deliver us. But deliver us from evil. From evil. For thine is the kingdom. For thine is the kingdom. And the power. And the power. And the glory. And the glory. Forever. Forever. In Jesus' holy name we pray. In Jesus' holy name we pray. The Lamb of God. The Lamb of God. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord God of Israel. Praise the Lord God of Israel. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.